Hello and welcome to today's coverage of the Track National Championships. Day four, session three, Dal Woodford and Elise Fraser in the commentary this evening with you. And we're going to kick the program off with men's sprint qualifying. Under 19 men's sprint qualifying, small field, eight riders. And the first to go will be Wilson Hannon, the last to go, Liam Kavner. Then we go into the men's under 19, 3,000 metre individual pursuit. The final rides, so the ride for the bronze and the gold and silver. And uh, if anything like this afternoon was to go by our lease, we should see, hopefully, some more great battles in the individual pursuits. Yeah, that's right, Dale. We've had a really exciting program today. And I know these um, men are looking to carry that on. So the under-19 riders in this afternoon session and the elite woman, of course, you can't not be impressed with the way Bronnie rode a new New Zealand record. So three rides on the track since, since I think, uh, about four or five weeks ago. Three times broken the New Zealand record. Now the first, third fastest in history in the 3,000 metre individual pursuit. That was something, wasn't it? Oh, Bronnie is exceptional. Um, I've seen her training down here about last week and oh the way she can hold her pace and hold her line and hold her position is just phenomenal um really exciting to watch out to see what she can do um, in future and world champs coming up i know she'll be targeting that event yeah it's nice to see that she's got the opportunity to focus a little bit on the individual pursuit of course it's not an event in the olympics so being a couple of years away still from paris it gives you the opportunity to, to specialize a little bit and it's going to be interesting to see what other riders when the team's name for Commonwealth Games, who is able to specialise, you know, maybe Sam Webster, well, of course he will ride the individual sprint anyway and, and chase an, yet another title at the Commonwealth Games. Um, but see if there are any other riders that go, right, I'm just going to maybe not do my normal team event and just focus a little bit more on the individual. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you'll notice, Dale, that uh, a lot of Brony's teammates aren't here. They're a sort of illness and sickness and COVID has sort of knocked them around. So... It's um, nice for her to be able to have that event to dig deep in. Well, hopefully, I don't know if the COVID, everyone's saying it will be gone next year while well, looking at following the Formula One and they're replacing drivers and they've got the biggest uh, bubble, the most well-funded bubble probably in world sport outside the America's Cup or equal to the America's Cup and they've got a few. So for the rest of us, it's going to be tough. So first rider is on the track, Wilson Hannon. West Coast, North Island, sprint qualifying. You know what it's all about. You've seen it before. He's just riding around now over the little white, the white line down the track. That's where the clock starts from. On the bell lap, they get three laps to wind up to speed. And then the timing starts, and you've got to post a good time. Eight riders to the quarterfinals. That's all eight, so they'll just be seated straight through to the quarterfinals. That's what it says at the bottom of my sheet. Fastest eight to quarterfinals. So all eight. So let's see what Wilson can do. We saw some good sprinting this afternoon. So he comes down the front straight, gets a fairly good line. This is the force, G force from the banking. Getting up to top speed. 5 3, so it's not a bad start for the first 100. So 10 8, 9 1. So 10 8, 9 1 for Wilson, just to get the ball rolling. Luke Blackwood's now rolling around. Um, the finesse and skill of some of these sprinters is amazing. Though how slow they can go on the banking is pretty impressive and pretty courageous. Yeah, there's not much rubber. You know, those tyres are about uh, 25 millimetres wide and on the angle, the 40, about 45 degree angle of the track. So when you're on that side, you're probably hanging on by about 12 mil and they ride round it. Yeah, a really slow speed at the top of the track and slowly build their way into it. Of course, using Vittoria tyres, and they're the best you can get. It's fast, really fast, and of course, they have the, the silk sidewalls and a little bit of grip and flex in that very famous tread. It's hardly a race uh, around the world that's not one on a Vittoria tyre. 
So here he comes. This will be a good time from Luke Blackwood. He's going to wind up. He'll be chasing a really fast time. He's been in good form at these championships. Comes down, stops the clock. It's a 10 4. 10 4, 6 6, Luke Blackwood. Here's Scott Henderson from Southland starting his ride. So Scott Henderson with the tri spoke on the front, the disc on the back. We're looking to do a sub 10 4 if he can. It's a fairly big ask, finely built young man. Looks more like a, a hill climber, but then, of course, Colin Ryan wasn't very big and he could sprint. So uh, just not quite the smoothest line into that 200. And that was a 12.125 there for Scott. So the ride of Luke Blackwood, 10466. It's a New Zealand Championship record. That record was held by Jackson Ogle, 10518. So a championship record, of course, the New Zealand fastest time by a New Zealand is 10223, done by Bradley Knight. All comers record is Angle Carlson, 10282. So that's the fastest time in New Zealand. Of course, Bradley Knight's time was done at the 2016 Junior World Championships in Argyle on the 200 metre track in Switzerland. Here's Conrad Clark coming around for the bell. And he starts the clock. Yeah, Conrad Clark, he's looked good. He's got plenty of horsepower. Third fastest, so he wants to finish strongly. And does a 10, 9, 8, 8. So we're moving through these pretty quickly. Charlie Tanoa of Southland. This is on the track. I think Charlie has a lot of potential as a really good sprinter. He's showing glimpses. So let's see if he can get it together on this qualifying under 19 means. So if you just joined us on Sky Sport Next, Dale Woodford and Elise Fraser bringing you the action. This is the third session, day number four of the Track New Zealand Championships, Track National Championships here in Cambridge. But Charlie's got a fair bit of work to do in the last half, and he won't be that happy with an 11 2. So, Jackson Russell, New Zealand record holder in the age group down. Always got a great, great leg speed. It's good tactically as well on the on the bike. They got himself in a bit of bother in the Kieran, but um, with a relegation, managed to pick up the bronze medal. So he'll be looking for a good ride. It's not the build of the normal sprinters, but this guy in years to come, I'd sign him for a road team. He's got a good kick, really good kick, and is a really capable bike rider. Jackson Russell. 
Hey guys, out of the saddle. He knows the track well, does a lot of laps in here. Drops down at the right time. Let's see what does he do at the halfway. He's in second with 5-2. Five, 5-2-8-5, two. Five, two, he's got to be able to bring it home to get the top spot. 10 8 oh, 6 not quite. Luke Blackwood, very good, 10 4 6, six. Jared Mann. I'm not sure I agree with the pink socks, Elise. Oh, yeah. Apparently that's a thing, Dale. A bad thing or a good thing? There we go. Oh, surely it stands see how out. fast he can go. It stands out. I do like when they have a, a trademark like the blue shoes and they stick with them or the, the orange helmet of Jonathan Fish. Just clashes with the red on his Avanti bike, unfortunately. It does a bit. He won't wear them to Hamilton Boys High, I can tell you that for a fact. Jared looks like he's in a big gear winding it down the back. Yeah, really capable young man who's got a lot of potential in sprinting. He's just quite new to the sport. And uh, he's quite high on the banking gang into that 200. He'll be looking to get some really good quality coaching in the, in the years to come and improve and keep improving. It's a good ride for Jared, 10 7 -2 -0. I think he'll be pretty delighted with that. 10 2 10 7 2 0. He finished that really well. He uh, was in second place going through that first half, so good in there. Yeah, held on, so he'll take a lot of confidence. He enjoys the match racing too. Liam Kavner, the last rider on the track. Luke Blackwood threw it down with a 10 4 6 6 national record time. Liam Kavner. in that really stealth position, getting as low as he can. And for a start of a 10, who made that famous? Matthew Glatzer. Well done, Dal. Oh, everyone at home already got that. They were way ahead of me. The great Australian, Matthew Glatzer. Liam Kavner. So he's been earmarked as a real sprinter of the future. And let's see what he can deliver as he comes down off the banking, down past us on the home straight. Again, just staying a little bit higher. What's he going to do at the halfway? He's on 5-1. He's fastest so far with 5-1-8-4. Can he hang on and bring it home? 10-4-7-9. So a very good ride under the old New Zealand Championship record of Jackson Ogle, 10.479, but Luke Blackwood, 10.466, 10.479, Jared Mann at 10.720, Jackson Russell, 10.8, along with Wilson Hannon, Conrad Clark, Charlie Tanoa, Scott Henderson. That's your, the eight, that's their seating for the next round. Fantastic ride. Luke Blackwood, Liam Kavner, nice to see. Times being lowered, I bet that's a couple of good PBs. Yeah, exciting ride by Luke Blackwood. I think he only recently changed to sprint from enduro, so impressive start there. He'll go back to enduro and be another rider with a big sprint. We'll keep take him, him for the road. Keep him for your road team. <laughs> So we're coming up to event 91 on this track national championships program and a massive effort by Cycling New Zealand and the events team, uh, all the officials. It's been long days for them. You see them down there, the, the commissaires or referees in their white shirts. They're here, at nine, or they're here before 9am. The session starts at 9am and they have a break and in between not very long and then they're back out for the afternoon session and then back for this evening session and uh, they're doing a great job as always volunteering their time for these track national championships.
So there we go, Edward Pawson coming into the starting gates in the front straight. You'll have Ikimov calling the times. His dad, Tim. Got your glasses on, Tim, so you can read that small print. Didn't even give you a smile. He did under the mask. <laughs> so there's Edward Pawson, focused. He really wants this. On the other side, Jackson White, Mid-South Canterbury. He has also been in very good form. So I think this is going to be a real battle. Yeah, both of these boys will be really hungry for this bronze medal. And not much separated them last night. So it's going to be very exciting. Jackson with the high aero socks. Trying to, the POC helmet. Edward in the Giro helmet with the, also the black aero socks, the look frame, the big chain ring. Underway, so Edward Pawson, always oh, straining, getting the hips and the back into that big gear. On the other side, Jackson White. So Jackson White, what can he do? Both riders underway, nice and safe and even in the first lap. Yeah, last night um, Edward went 318.3 and Jackson 318.7, so... It's Four. all on. Yes, 400s, 400s of a second between them last night. Who's backed up? Who's uh, had the right food, the right drink? Not much between them at the moment. 36, 37 through the five. So they're riding nice and steady. So Edward Pawson will be aware of the big finish of Jackson White. Gets up one, call from his, from his uh, coach down there. Jackson White's just looking so smooth, running lovely on top of that gear. Edward Pawson, Jackson White head to head. Edward Pawson's edged out, he's uh, opened it up a little bit. He really wants this, the young man from Auckland. He's got seven to go, a lot can happen in the last seven laps. Edward Paulson heads in, down round into the back straight, chasing Jackson White. Jackson White with plenty of work to do. Paulson now start, starts to hurt a little bit. You, the individual pursuit, Jackson White's pulled it back just a fraction. It's going to be a good battle. It was close, 400s between them in qualifying last night. It could come back to that as the laps get ticked down, five to go. Pawson up against Mid-South Canterbury's Jackson White. There's Pawson down the back straight. Jackson White heads out of the front straight, round the bend. Both riders holding good position, trying to be nice and aero. Jackson White down the home straight. They'll come around, there'll be three laps, the last three laps. Three to go for Edward Pawson, three to go for Jackson White. Let's have a look at the gap. It's still 1.2. It's come down about 0.4 of a second in the last uh, 600, 400 metres. So Jackson White starting to crawl his way back into it. Has he got enough track in front of him? Edward Pawson's got to dig deep, really fight the last two laps. 0.95's the gap. Edward Pawson knows Jackson White's coming after him. There's Jackson White down the front straight, nice and smooth, not moving on his bike. They go across. Pawson just, 0.7. They come around, who's gonna just get on the last half lap? Edward Pawson's had the advantage, he hung on, he has. He has hung on by 0.12 of a second. Very good ride, 3.18.835, 3.18.960. It doesn't get any closer than that. Very good pursuiting, two different strategies. But the bronze medal to Edward Pawson.
High fiving is there. It's pretty special. Great family. That is so he's one of the nicest kids on the circuit. Great to see Edward Pawson picking up the bronze medal in the individual pursuit. But Jackson White, what a fight. What a battle. 318, good times. So here we go. We will be into the final. Well, the final's got a bit to live up to if it's going to be as good as that ride for the bronze. The man from Waikato Bay, plenty. Kyle Atkin. Stretch in the neck. Getting focused. Kyle Adkin, Joel Douglas, there's Joel Douglas. He was in fantastic form at the National Track Series. He's showing good form here. At least have you got the qualifyings from last night? Yeah, Kyle Aiken, 317.8, and Joel Douglas, 318.1. So again, we've got half a second between them. That's not much. No, it's anyone's race. Look at the start. Look at the effort that goes in to get that gear going from the standing start. It's like trying to get the, the car going in fifth gear. You drop the clutch and it clunk, 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 clunk out of the gates. Well, they're a lot smoother than that. I think they got that gear up pretty well, now. You didn't see my car. <laughs> So both riders into their individual pursuit, 3,000 metres. Carl Adkin comes down the front straight with the advantage, 0.7. Early in this individual pursuit, we saw the gap get out to two seconds and come right back to 0.12 in the previous ride. Carl Adkin looking comfortable, looking nice, just sitting there nice and smooth. Joel Douglas looks like he's flying, he's just getting on top of the gear, starting to crank into his ride, building the pace, takes over the lead. So that'll switch back and forward potentially. Joel Douglas, 0.33 in front. Yeah, Joel Douglas is really laying on a good move there. It's just stretched it out a little bit more. So Joel Douglas, oh, look at him. He's really on top of the gear. You can almost see him accelerating as we watch. Kyle Lagkin, head down the back. There's Douglas. He's really on top of the gear. And as he comes out of this corner, you watch him go down the back. As we're sitting here in the stadium, we can almost see him increasing his pace. Looks like he's on a good ride. Kyle Lagkin, though, he's in the fight. He's not giving it away. 0 0.8, 0 0.86 between the two riders. Five laps to go. So Joel Douglas in control, this Dean Pedican looking on, the sole spectator in the stand. It's the 1992 Olympian, former national elite road race champion. Joel Douglas, though, he's on a mission tonight. He's cleared out a little bit. He's absolutely flying. He's got out to 1.3. He's after a good time. He's just got to keep it together. They'll have two to go next time they come around. So Joel Douglas heads down the back straight. Kyle Adkin in the front straight. Two laps to go. 500 metres left of the 3,000. Joel Douglas travelling at 54 kilometres an hour. Can Kyle Adkin dig a little bit deeper? Can he find something else and come back? Joel Douglas, he's increased the pace. He's just gone after this big time. He gets the bell. Joel Douglas, Kyle Adkin. The lights are gone out a little bit. Joel Douglas. 
Comes down the back straight to finish this off. Let's have a look at the time. What's he stopped it in? 3.17.117. Well, that was a very good individual pursuit, Kyle Atkin. Hung in there, hung in there to the last sort of two laps, and then he had burned everything he had. Here we go. 54.79 kilometres an hour. Joel Douglas, 317.117. Kyle Lagkin, 320.138. Joel Douglas ran a second faster than what he did last night, so he really came out fighting. Yeah, he's got a smile on his face. Well deserved. Well, two epic individual pursuits. Fantastic racing. Congratulations to... Joel Douglas, Kyle Atkins, Edward Pawson, also Jackson White for the ride he put up, 0.12. So I'll just be having a bit of a reset and I'll be coming back out for some more individual pursuiting. It is the 4,000 individual pursuit for the elite men. The ride for the bronze will be Daniel Bridgewater, George Jackson. The gold, Tom Sexton, Keegan Hornblow. The gap. Tom Sexton was fastest by a wee way last night in qualifying, but that can all change tonight. Saw him riding out here earlier. So we'll just uh, watch the riders, and Elise is just studying the times here, riding them all down. Of course, coaching so many of the riders here that are winning medals. If you want to go fast, you call Elise. 0800 Elise. <laughs> well, there's the strain. You know he's giving it everything. He's got the water beside him, breathing deeply. 317, Joel Douglas. So around a second between these riders last night, Daniel Bridgewater 4.15.5 and George Jackson 4.16.5. So this is going to be another tight race. Yes, both riders have been in good form on the podium in a couple of events already as we see George Jackson, winner of the points race, bronze in the scratch race, the big man from Wellington. He knows he's got a battle on his hands, Dan Bridgewater. He's just getting better and better. I think we're going to see another big performance from Daniel Bridgewater tonight. George Jackson, though, he knows how to scrap it. He knows how to fight. Both of these riders coming under CNZ banner, wearing the cast helmets and rocking the Southern Spa wheels. Fastest wheels around. Southern Spas, they do spas for American racing yachts. And they um, invested some of their time into the technology for the wheels as we were building up to the Tokyo Olympics. And I think they even had them uh, in Barcelona. Very fast wheels, they're super, super light. And so rigid when you see the, the power and the torque that goes through them, particularly with the team sprinters when they get off the line. So technology is absolutely amazing, and the, the bike being ridden is the Avanti bike. It's not being produced anymore now that uh, the Struthers family no longer are involved in Avanti, and it's been bought by Scott, and Scott have their own, of course, brand of, of bike on the world scene, but they don't have a, a track bike, certainly not one of this level. So these bikes are still leading as good as anything else out there in the world at the moment, and with the Southern Spa wheels, that's why... We had such a good Olympic Games. So Daniel Bridgewater comes around 12 on the board, 107 through the first thousand. That's a pretty good ride, 109 for George Jackson. So Dan Bridgewater, 1.3 in front. So George will just keep building into it. He's not known as a kilo rider and he'll just keep getting faster. 
He's a big engine on the road, George Jackson. Dan Bridgewater, nice and compact. Nice aero position, got the head tucked down between the hands. George Jackson also, but the tall man, he needs the, the extensions on the bars. And Dan Bridgewater, originally from rowing, and he's done quite a bit of rowing in America, I believe, so he knows what hard work's about. Yeah, it's amazing, the athletes that can cross over from rowing into cycling, 400 metre hurdling into cycling. We'll take them all. Yeah, so why not? If you're watching, when you know someone that's cycling and you think, oh, maybe I've got the physique, the fast twitch fibres for this, just go down to your local velodrome and give it a crack. You just never know what you might find out. 2.10 for Dan Bridgewater, 2.11, so he's still got the advantage. It's about the same gap as last night in qualifying. George Jackson will be wanting to lift the pace a bit as he heads down the back straight. Still a long way, seven to go. 1.3, so he's holding, George Jackson's holding, he hasn't lost any time, he's pulled back a fraction, and you'll want to keep doing that. George Jackson. Daniel Bridgewater, head to head, and the bronze medal ride at the National Track Championships here in Cambridge. Individual pursuiting. 1.3, it's all that 1.3, so Daniel Bridgewater. With the slightly faster start, he's been able to hold it. George Jackson. He'll be wanting to get a little bit more out of the legs. Big transition for George, riding from the, on the road. See George Jackson's tucked in his mullet for the pursuit tonight. He's obviously trying to go full aero. He's going as hard as he can. He's out there, three to go, so three laps to go. So now if you've got anything left, you've got to find a little bit more, you've got to go. Is there anything left in the tank? George Jackson, he wants a big sprint. You'll be thinking he's leading out someone on his road team right now and goes, come on, we're full gas for the next 750 metres. Bridgewater, though, he's doing exactly the same. He's pulling harder on the handlebars. Increasing the pace, it's 1.8. Bridgewater's extending. George Jackson... He's fighting hard. Daniel Bridgewater, he's after a good time tonight. Craig Palmer just points, he knows which way he's going. He's not on the boat, he's going the right way around the velodrome. And he's gonna produce a good time. Daniel Bridgewater, what's he gonna stop the clock on? 4.15, 555. So that was a good, solid pursuit from both riders. George Jackson hung, he hung tough. He hung at 1.3 seconds for the majority of the ride and ended up just at 1.9 behind with 4.17, 4.93. Daniel Bridgewater, 4.15, triple five. So ride for the gold medal and the next ride on the track. This is Track National Championships, 4,000 metre individual pursuit final. Tom Sexton in the colours of Southland. Man who really knows a thing or two about pursuiting. Keegan Hornblow on the other side in the colours of Tasman. Keegan won't yet know his limits, reasonably new to, not cycling, but to track cycling and individual pursuiting. Great talent, producing some really good rides. Great to see the colours of Tasman in this final. So a little bit of a difference, at least, between them in qualifying last night. Yeah, around three seconds difference. Tom Sexton did a 4.12 and Keegan a 4.15.
But I definitely wouldn't count Keegan out. He knows exactly what he needs to do tonight. And yes, away. Tom's underway. He'll have a big gear on, gets it going, puffs the cheeks out, flexes the biceps. Keegan doing the same, and yep, I wouldn't count him out. I think each ride he'll do, he'll get faster. The more pursuits he rides, the better, the smoother he'll get. But look how quickly Tom Sexton's into the groove straight away. Just uh, that experience of getting from the base bar onto the, the aero bars and the head tucked in, just that little bit quicker than Keegan, and that was the difference in the opening lap in a bit. Tom Sexton's 1.8 advantage. He's gone out hard, Tom Sexton. He started. He started like we're just racing over four laps, not not the full 16. He's got 13 to go, and he's absolutely flying. I think Tom's the most aero in the um, men's team pursuit at the moment, so he's definitely got that advantage, and he looks like he's using it as best he can, tucking his head in there. Yeah, he looks very good, very compact in that front end. There's not much room. That's the, the idea is to cut down the airflow in that frontal area. Keegan's looking pretty good as well on the bike, but Tom Sexton, I tell you, he's on a mission tonight. Just extends the lead out, 3.2 seconds. So Tom getting the opportunity to really target the individual pursuit at these championships, making the most of the opportunity. Greg Palmer calling the laps down there. Tom got a bronze medal in the TT at Road Nationals as well, so not afraid of time trialling and hurting himself. He's good at it, there's no doubt about that. As we see Tom Sexton heading down the back straight, chasing Keegan Hornblade, will just about have him in his sights, a bit, about a bend between them. Keegan Hornblade still looking good though. So you don't see very far out of those uh, eyes when you've got tucked up like that, maybe half a metre, a metre in front of you. You're just focusing on that little black line. And at this speed, you can feel the G-forces on the banking pushing you. Keegan Hornblow. Tom Sexton is chasing him. That's the pursuit, and he's got his uh, prey in his sights right now. Down the back, Tom Sexton, there you go. You can see he's closing on Keegan Hornblow, but Keegan Hornblow is putting in a very good ride as well. 4.5 the gaps so are Tom Sexton's on a mission tonight. They'll come around, they'll get 1,000 metres to go. For Tom Sexton this time past, he has four to go. He goes through 3.08. He'll be chasing. He'll be looking at close to 60 kilometres an hour if he can get up there. He wants to try and get as close as he can to that 408. Tom Sexton giving it everything. Keegan Hornblow is giving him some to chase. And he's now starting to pull a bit back. So good, going to be a good finish from Keegan Hornblow. Two laps to go. Tom Sexton will come flying past us down the home straight as he pursues Keegan Hornblow heading down the back to get two to go. 3.9 seconds between them. Bell lap for Tom Sexton. There's Tom Sexton, gets the bell now. 3.55 with one to go. Half a lap left for Tom Sexton. Keegan Hornblow comes down the front straight. And there's uh, Tom Sexton coming into the home straight to finish it off. There he goes. What's he going to do? It's a 4.10. 4.10.761. Very quick ride, Tom Sexton. And Keegan Hornblower, 4.14. Wow, 4.14. It's a great effort. There we go. There's the top four. Tom Sexton, 4.10.761. Keegan Hornblow, very good. 4.14.384. Daniel Bridgewater. 415, triple five, and George Jackson, 417, 493. The top four elite men in the individual pursuit at the Track National Championships. So 
So very good ride for Tom Sexton. A couple of seconds off what he rode last night with that 4.10. He rode 4.12 last night. So big effort. Excellent performance. So next up we'll have the quarterfinals in the sprints heat one. Luke Blackwood, it's in the 19 men's sprint quarterfinals. Luke Blackwood, Scott Henderson. They will run So Luke Blackwood, Scott Henderson will be coming up onto the track for the in the 19 men's sprint quarterfinals. Just checks the riders are ready. Scott's drawn the inside position. He will lead away. Luke Blackwood, fastest qualifier in the Flying 200. He was around um, two seconds faster than Scott, so Scott's got a big ask. Stranger things have happened in sprinting, but you're right, Luke Blackwood, he should be able to go through this quite comfortably. Scott Henderson will be all the better for the experience of the competition. Scott Henderson's decided to stay low on the track. Well, it's not a bad option, you know, you're only looking one side over your shoulder, now he moves that on, oh, he's staying down, so it's probably the right thing to do. He knows the speed difference between himself and Luke Blackwood. But he's riding well, the young man from Southland. Now he's just in the middle a little bit, leaving himself slightly exposed, a little bit wide open when you go left or right. Blackwood just takes the opportunity as he had to look to the wrong side. So Scott Henderson, he's going to chase hard. He's going to chase Luke Blackwood all the way. Luke Blackwood has a little look over the shoulder. He's got a couple of le over him, a couple of links, and uh, safely through. Yeah, Blackwood should just showed his experience there. Nice to see the way Scott Henderson approached that sprint. There we go, just confirming that. Luke Blackwood, 60, almost 61 kilometres an hour. An 11 8. <laughs> Quarter final number two will be next up onto the track. We'll have Liam Kavner. Charlie Tanoa, Liam Kavner, second fastest qualifier in the sprint qualifying round. Just getting himself locked in, strapped in. Super Sid gets Charlie up to the rail, up. He's going to get the outside position. So by Cato Man, Liam Kavner will lead away. The big stems, the sprint bars. Once again, a little bit of a 
time difference between the two, but this is match sprinting. Man on man, anything can happen. Liam Kavner, as they have to do, leads away on the bottom of the track at a good pace. So both riders reasonably comfortable with the positions at the moment. Sometimes you'll see a rider who doesn't want to be at the front. He's got the skill, do a track stand, try and force the other rider to go past him. Gary Sword style, one of the best in the past of the track stand. Here we go, Charlie. He's not scared of Liam. Liam Kavner, Charlie Tanoa. It's the man from Southland just at the back at the moment, trying to force Liam Kavner to lift the pace. They'll come in to get the bell. We'd had one on the board. Liam Kavner on the front, just controlling things. Just doing enough to go through. As you'd expect, as per qualifying, Liam Kavner, untroubled on that ride, just controlled it. Knew he had the speed and power. So you're picking an upset in any of the heats to come, Elise? Hmm, hard to tell, Dale. Um, this one could be close. Yeah, tactics. The next heat, Elise is referring to Jared Mann, Conrad Clark. Point two between them and the Flying 200. So, yeah. We've got the pink socks out there again, so that's exciting. Yep, and just while Charlie's got the Tinted visor. No, sorry, Conrad's got the tinted visor on. Jared gets strapped in. Ray Sheath managing him, managing the team. Does a fantastic job. It's also Raquel's doing the session in the afternoon. So, Raquel, two years ago, I've been riding here. Great to see the Sheath family. Been involved in cycling for so many years from BMX through to. World Championship level with all, all the family. Conrad Clark looking. A Jared good steer out. Saying, what's with those socks? <laughs> so Jared Mann's on the front. Very close in qualifying, point two between them. So the tactics, getting it right, is so important here. Get it wrong, you'll be going home. You have to win. Conrad Clark, high on the track. Jared Mann, he's got the front. Does he want to stay there? It looks like he wants to protect the front. He's got to be careful when you're at the front, high on the track. You've got to look both ways. You can get caught out, but... Conrad Clark goes, well, I'll just want to slow it down a little bit. Jared Mann goes, no, nah, I'm going to keep the pace high. Well, Conrad Clark, if he wanted a lead out, here it is. Oh, there we go. The door was opened. He was hit. Jared Mann heading up the track. Conrad Clark, but Jared Mann's got the speed. Well, there's only point two between them. Now Jared Mann's got the speed to get up. Has he got it, the power to get over the top? They go to the line and he does. Jared Mann. Well, a little mistake, but well, he more than made up for it. I think he had a bit more in the tank in qualifying. He had plenty of horsepower there to get over the top of Conrad Clark. As they come around, here's Jared Mann. He'll be happy. Yeah, both of those boys riding on their respective indoor tracks. But Jared might have just had the extra advantage of this being home. There we go, just confirming. Jared Mann got over the top of Conrad Clark to take that. Once again, in the very high 62 kilometre an hour range.
Quarterfinal number four, Jackson Russell, Wilson Hennon. Wilson from the West Coast, North Island. Road, a very good 10-8. Jackson Russell, also 10-8, but 10-8-9 versus 10-8-0. Wilson Hannon on the inside. Action Jackson on the outside. Jackson Russell. Wilson Hannon. Both riders will be looking to take this. They'll really want to advance. See who's got the tactics, who's got the speed. Oh, they're so, going up a hill at the moment. Yep, big climb up the banking. So that Wilson wanted to get Jackson to the front, so we might see that track stand yet. It'll keep Sean happy. There we go. Then. Jackson can stand there all day. He's a very good bike handler. Got good skills. He seems to be comfortable riding in that second wheel. Just keeping his distance. Wanting Wilson to pick up the pace. Wilson's going quite happy where it is with Jackson. He's also got a very big jump, very explosive. It's quite an art to riding on the front and looking over your shoulder and being able to hold a line, so something these boys will practice a lot. Well, where he's sitting, where Wilson's sitting now, he's looking left and riding against Jackson Russell. You want to be looking one way because you don't want to... Oh, he's right down on the Cote de Jure. Now that's uh, taking the lead off the track. Of course, an F1, that's a no-no. So Jackson Russell. Still high. He gives him a bit of a flick at the top. Oh, he's wanting to mix it up. He's a bit worried about the Wilson Hannon. So Wilson gets out of the saddle, he's left it late. You don't see that too often. Now it kicks him to the line. We'll see if anything comes through on the taking of the front position down on the Cote de Jour to pass. Jackson Russell. Taken that one. And that's, there we go, it's come up on the scoreboard. Jackson Russell, been given that over Wilson Annan. So now you're not at Western Springs, it's the Kieran coming up. So it's the Elite Men's Kieran first round. And heat number one are lined up on the inside, Kao Lart. The colours of Tasman. He will be coming up onto the track once the motorbike goes around, warms the tyres up. So three from each heat. Through to the first three, through to the A final. The others ride the seven through ten final. So that's Kao Lart up onto the track in the colours of Tasman. Outside him, Patrick Clancy. Then Bradley Knight, second in the sprints last night. And Dylan Day, top of the track. Need to do a bit more weight training, Steve, to lift them up. Good to see Bradley back on the start line. 
um, he sort of just rolled through his sprint final in the end last night. Yeah, so. I didn't really hear. I know he had a, a medical issue. I haven't heard or didn't ask what that was, but um, great to see him out here. He's such a talented young man. The bike's coming around. They all want to go to the, the big final. One through six final, that's what they're aiming for. Three from each heat. Kaula, as he has to do, leads away. They hold their positions for the first lap, and then if they want, they can change. Okay, Kaula, it's decided to sit nice and close to the motorbike. You don't have to. Patrick Clancy sitting off, giving himself a couple of lengths. He knows Kaula's pretty quick. He wants to run at him, but the man behind, Bradley Knight, he is... Super quick, second fastest in the individual sprint qualifying. It might have been third fastest, I think that Kukuzu was second fastest actually. But it was not much in it, and he was sprinting well. Patrick Clancy has a look over his shoulder. Dylan Day, he's just banking on the wheel of Bradley Knipe going all the way round. But it might be a gamble having to go three wide. Bonal bike will come off next time, three to go. Kayla just having a little look now. He looks over the shoulder, sees where Patrick Clancy is. They've had good battles over the years in the age groups. Now into the elite, stepping up with the big boys. Patrick Clancy, Kayla, Dylan Day makes a little move around the outside. Bradley Knipe just uh, relaxing there at the moment. He's got himself a little bit boxed in. Dylan Day wants to keep him out. Bradley Knipe, he's going to have to go the long way around. Day three wide, Bradley Knight, what is he going to do? He's going to go four down the back, and here he goes. He kicks past Patrick Clancy. He's got himself in a spot of bother. Kaolard, is he going to be able to hold off Patrick Clancy as they go to the line? It's going to be close for the third. Oh, they're going around. There's still a long way to go. Bell lap. There's Bradley Knight going all the way around. Here comes Patrick Clancy. He's got over the top of Kaolard. Bradley Knight kicks care by a couple of bike lengths. Clancy, Day, and Kaolard misses out. Yeah, Kayla Lart just getting boxed in down the back straight. Well, it changed, didn't it? Like, Bradley Knight was in a spot of bother, but the class of the young man rode through. Patrick Clancy, strong ride, but very good ride from Dylan Day. Took it on, early, took it on early, trying to box Bradley Knight in. Gutsy. Got through to the final. So there we go, just confirming Bradley Knight, Patrick Clancy, Dylan Day through to the, the final, one through six final. Carol Art will be riding the seven to 10 final, or seven to nine. Lining up, next heat. Reuben Webster's drawn one, I think. Is that Reuben Webster come? No, it might not be. It's, it's not. You and Cousins? Yeah, it's you and Cousins, yep, absolutely, on the little red bike. Sam Dakin, well, he should be able to go through this with uh, having a cigarette. Sebastian Lip, third wheel. Hayden Jack, and then Reuben Webster. Reuben Webster at the top. Now, he is a very good rider. Quick. Once again, three will go through. Sebastian Lipper want to go through. Reuben Webster, Hayden Jack, Ewan Cousins, what can they do? Sam right Dakin. Very good ride in sprint qualifying. Of course, he's won this in the national championships before Sam Dakin knows what it's about, knows what to do. They're all off underway. Cruise round, drop into their positions. Reuben Webster at the back. He won't finish there. Ewan Cousins, good to see Ewan lining up in the sprints, up against the sprinters. He doesn't mind taking on any aspect of cycling. Loves his riding. It's always a good opportunity to learn. Yeah, I think uh, more enduro riders particularly road riders, at least should ride some sprints and Kieran's to improve their ability and out there on the road and bunch sprints and the jump and the explosiveness. You, you know you know what it's like on the road. To, you know, if you've got to close a gap, it's a sprint, isn't it? You know, if someone's 20 seconds up the road, you've got to get out of your seat and sprint, close it down. 
That's right, and learning how to suck a wheel. Sebastian Lapp will be trying to do that on Dylan, uh, sorry, on Sam Dakin right here. Yes, you want to stick to that like Velcro, but Ruben Webster knows as the bike comes around with three to go, he's got to start moving up. So Ruben Webster goes, well, I'm not going to wait for Sam Dakin because, you know, if everyone's doing that, I'll take control at the front and they can all battle over Sam Dakin. Dakin pushes his way through nicely. Oh, look at the speed of Sam Dakin. He hasn't even really turned on the turbo. He just puts one kick on the pedal with the left leg. Hasn't used the right one yet. So Sam Dakin... Down the back straight he goes in control. He's in cruise mode at the moment. Ruben Webster doing exactly the same, sitting in behind him. Just keeping an eye over his shoulder to see if anyone's coming. Sam Dakin into the bell lap. Now they need to start picking it up. Ewan Cousins, he's going to stick to Ruben Webster. No, he's not. He's going to try and challenge him. That's a good idea because it makes the other ones go a bit wider. Look at Ewan Cousins fight for that third wheel. Dakin Webster are through. Ewan Cousins is fighting and he's going to hang on. Is he going to get it? He does. He gets the third spot. Well, Sebastian Lip. Misses out. Hotly contested there. A bit of an upset. Well, very good riding, Ewan Cousins. He's made the big final. One through six, Karen final with a very good ride. Didn't panic. Sam Dakin, well... He didn't even really need to take the engine out of idle. The man from Auckland, he is in good form. At these national championships, he'll be taking a bit of confidence from that, of course, in a big build-up phase with the Oceanas coming up. And then, of course, the Commonwealth Games. Sam Dakin, Ruben Webster, Ewan Cousins going through. Sebastian Lip, Hayden Jack will join Bradley Knipe in the 7-9 through nine final. Well, the Karen Riders will go back, relax. They'll be back out for the final later on this evening. And the 19 sprint semi-finals, first ride. Like all the sprint semis and finals, you can go to three if required. So it's the best of three. They'll be drawing for the position to see who's on the inside, who's on the outside. So Luke Blackwood, Jackson Russell, semi-final. This is going to be good. Jackson Russell and Luke Blackwood. Blackwood, the fastest qualifier. Luke started this event off really well. I know he's been on the Waikato track here and training hard. Well, he's got to put all that training list to good use right now. Yeah, we saw Jackson in that uh, quarter final. He's pretty crafty. Let's see what he can do here. Yeah, it rode about 244 metres around the track, going through on the inside instead of the full 250. Got to See how many it. times you can get away with that. And the 19 men's sprint competition semi-finals. First final up onto the track, first semi, Luke Blackwood. There he goes, Tim Pawson. Just lifts up the back wheel. Be the most weights Tim's lifted for a while. Oh, harsh. I'm too busy cycling. Jackson Russell. He's drawn the outside position. And uh, he was pretty keen to have that position last time. Right from the back. 
Then he took control at the front and stalled it. Luke Blackwood on that look sprint frame. Nice looking bike. It was a popular choice with the Chinese woman's team riding look and uh, the French men's sprint team. You're a book of knowledge. So the handlebars facing up on the sprint bikes in the bygone era. They used to have the big drop stems and the big deep bars. So it's all changed. Right, what's Luke Blackwood going to be able to do? Jackson Russell. Luke Blackwood fractionally quicker in qualifying. Right, 10, 4, 6, 10, 7, 9. So there's nothing between these two. So tactically, you've got to get it right, Luke Blackwood. Jackson Russell, Luke's doing everything okay at the moment. He's holding one position on the track. He's left the door. No, he didn't leave the door open. Jackson was pushing for it. They come into the bell, Luke Blackwood. He hasn't wound up full speed yet. Jackson Russell's getting full speed. He's going to have to watch. He might kick over the top. Luke Blackwood's going to have to move. Oh, he's going. He's looking smooth. Luke Blackwood. He's got Jackson Russell on the hip. Can Jackson Russell get over the top? They go to the line. Jackson Russell gets there. Goes one up. Best of three. A very good sprinting. This young man, Jackson Russell, got up onto the shoulder. Just had enough. Throw the bike across the line. Takes it by about a quarter of a wheel. So he goes one up. Best of three. Semi-finals. Waikato v Waikato. Just confirming that. Jackson Russell takes that first one. Second semi, about to come up onto the track. I wonder how many laps Brendan's done up that banking over the course of the four days, walking up to the start. So on the outside, Liam Kavner. Well, he's, only, he's on the inside because not quite as high on the track as I thought. So we've got Jared in the pink socks and Liam with the white gloves. Perfect. So Jared, man, he's deceptive. Sometimes you think, oh, he doesn't look like he's going that quick. And then you got to go around him. And they realise just how fast he's going. Very smooth peddler. Tactically, what's he got up against? Liam Kavner. They'll know each other well from the Waikato Champs, from all the training they've been doing in the various uh, cycling programs. Liam Cabinet, Jared Mann. This goes to show there's no right or wrong size to be a sprinter. Jackson Russell, slightly bigger than a skewer. Then you've got the tall Figure, Liam Kavner, and the more compact, explosive Jared Mann. Two on the board, Liam Kavner high on the banking, just looking down. Jared Mann tracking him, just sitting off, doing the right thing because he's got something to run at if he leaves himself a little bit of a gap. Jared Mann's high, he's got the high rise, and there he goes, he's going to dive underneath. Oh, he's got the inside line. Liam Kavner moves up to try and get around. Jared Mann hasn't dropped into the racing line yet. Now he has, so he's committed. So Kavner has got the work to do around the outside. Jared Mann on the inside. Liam Kavner, can he get over the top? Goes to the line, he does. He looks like he was doing it easy. Well, very good sprinting, but Liam Kavner takes that one. Goes one up. So Jared Mann, Luke Blackwood.
Oh, we'll be back in their corners, having a chat to the coaches in between rounds. Good sprinting. So a little bit of a break while we will head down for some presentations. Four presentations, of course, the individual pursuits. There we go, Liam Kavner taking that. Look at the speed, 64.2. 11-2 in a match sprint, not too bad at all. Good racing by both those boys in that competition. They'll be back out for their second rides a little bit later in the program. So just coming up at your home, just to, while they set up, you can go make your cup of tea and then come back and join us on Sky Sport next. Dale Woodford and Elise Fraser bring you what's been a great night. Third session, fourth day of these track national championships. So at least it's been a pretty exciting night. Some really good individual pursuit racing, uh, carrying on the theme from, from the, today's earlier sessions, and then some great sprinting there. Yeah, we're after a great start. That's a real hive of activity down there in the pits. You can see riders on the rollers, the mechanics working away. Riders stretching out. Some relaxing in their chairs, eating and drinking. It's the National Track Championships, fourth day. As the riders making their way over to the presentation area. Won't be too far away. We'll be heading down to our podium announcer, Jeanette Douglas. So just confirming the Kieran finals we will have in the 7 to 10 final, Kao Lart, Sebastian Lip, Hayden Jack, in the 1 to 6 final, Brady Knight, Sam Dakin, Patrick Clancy, Ruben Webster, Dylan Day, Ewan Cousins. So those start sheets have been confirmed. Liam Kavner, Jackson Russell, one up in the semis and the 19 men sprint. So I think we're just about to head down to the infield for the presentations. We've got two presentations for the individual pursuit.
ladies and gentlemen, the awards for the 2022 Track National Championships Under-19 Men Individual Pursuit will now take place. The medals will be presented by Michelle Henderson, representing the Cycling New Zealand Board. In third place, and the winner of the bronze medal, representing Auckland, Edward Pawson. In second place, and the winner of the silver medal, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Carl Aitken. And in first place in the winner of the gold medal and the recipient of a national jersey and your 2022 under-19 men individual pursuit national champion, representing Auckland, Joel Douglas. <laughs> and Joel also receives the DA Comparini Cup and a native plant from our proud sponsors, Amber Garden Centre. Um. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for our place getters in the under-19 men's individual pursuit. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the 2022 Track National Championships Elite Men's Individual Pursuit will now take place. We invite Michelle Henderson from the Cycling New Zealand Board to present the medals. In third place, and the winner of the bronze medal, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Daniel Bridgewater. In second place, and the winner of the silver medal, representing Tasman, Keegan Hornblow. And in first place, and the winner of the gold medal, and the recipient of a national champion's jersey, your 2022 Elite Men's Individual Pursuit national champion, representing Southland, Tom Sexton. Tom also receives the Ron Sheetley Family Trophy and a native plant from our proud sponsors, Amber Garden Centre. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join us and show your appreciation for the place getters in the elite men's individual pursuit. We are catching up with Joel, um, recently um, medalled gold in the under-19 men's individual pursuit. So third national title for 2022, Joel. Talk us through that race and how do you feel? Uh, yeah, I'm super stoked. Like, just months of training paid off. Um, and yeah, like, working hard with my coach. Um, yeah, couldn't ask for anything better. I know your mum is your biggest supporter, but with no spectators, she can't be here. I am hoping she's watching on the live stream. What do you want to talk, um, say to her and the rest of your family? Yep, she's at family friend's house, so yeah, I just can't thank them enough. Like, 
the dedication that even they have, like, yeah, it couldn't be done without them. Cycling is all around family and, and volunteers. Uh, the grassroots of the sport is amazing. So thank you to your mum and your family, um, and thank you for you showing up and, um, and really showcasing the sport. Yeah, thank you very much. We are catching up with Tommy Two Guns. Tommy, what? Tell me, what, when did you st when did you start cycling? At what age? Uh, I started at eight years old. Yeah. And you are now? Twenty three. And tell us how long you have been trying for an individual national champion title. I think this is probably my thirteenth uh, nationals. So thirteen years. <laughs> so this is your first national individual national title. How proud are you of yourself right now? Uh, pretty proud, yeah. To lay out a time like what I did then as well, it's pretty, it's pretty cool as well. You know, there's a lot of boys away um, for sickness and overseas and that, but I think that time would have given some of them a good run for their money. So, no, I'm pretty proud of it all. And that, we think that's the third fastest time, or second fastest New Zealander, probably behind Gade. It's pretty impressive. You've showed, up, you've showed up on the night with those on the start list and you've created some history, so you should be very proud of that. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, joked, joked about going under uh, 14 for quite a while, and a lot of the boys are like, oh, you're dreaming, you're dreaming. But uh, I think it's getting a bit more realistic. You know, I'm getting uh, a lot stronger, a lot smarter. Uh, so, yeah, it's hopefully Oceania champs or sometime in the near future I can create that 10 mark. Yeah, and so you have Oceania's coming up, and then you're heading away with the Black Spoke team for another season in Europe? Yeah, so uh, I'll do Road Oceania champs the next week. Kend in Brisbane as well, uh, and then I'll be heading over to Europe, uh, racing with the team, and also doing a few track races here and there with uh, the fellow men's endurance squad. So that'll be cool, just you know, reuniting uh, with some of the boys in Madison's all over. So yeah, it'll be heaps of fun. Also, and talk, talk us through that the development and that experience you got last year being overseas, and kind of what that's brought to the track to the track side of it, but also just to you developing as a cyclist. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I've gone uh, leaps and bounds ahead uh, in my fitness and all that. Uh, you know, I'm probably a bit more level-headed in that, uh, in the races and that, a bit smarter, uh, a lot stronger, you know, and I've, I've seen that coming back to the track. I've got a lot more horsepower in the team pursuit and that, in the camps that we've uh, recently had. You know, I can actually do a lot better job for the team, so, you know, hopefully I can put my hand up for selection for races like the Commonwealth Games and that coming up this year. And I know, just like Joel, you've got family and friends who've been supporting you since you were eight. What do you want to say to them today? Uh, thanks for all the support. I know mum and dad are probably watching from uh, sunny old Invercargill. So, uh, and my girlfriend will be at home. She was racing before. Uh, yeah, thanks for like, all the support. It's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting pathway of life, but you know, it's, it's pretty cool when you pull off rides like tonight. Thanks, Tom. We're all incredibly proud of you. Well done. Thank you very much. So we're on to the next ride. Ride two, best of three. Semi-final number one. Great to hear from Tom Sexton, Joel Douglas. And the 19 men's sprint. So we have Jackson Russell on the inside. Oh, Luke Blackwood, look at him, focused. Jackson rolls away, Luke Blackwood. There's not much between these two. Jackson had the upper hand in the first ride. Both Blackwood. of these guys playing the tactical cat and mouse pretty nicely. Yeah, Luke just trying to hold his distance, stay, hold that gap. Like Jackson 
look over, not quite see him. So hard work standing there on the banking. You see him just holding the bike, keeping the grip. Good bike control from Luke Blackwood. Jackson Russell. Tense. I think these two will know each other quite well. Interesting to see what they're trying to do here. Who's got the, the faster sprint off a, a slower start? Well, off a slow start, Jackson Russell's got a very good jump. And that's why he likes to control and pressure the rider and take control, push them up, slow it down, and then you go bang, jump out, use that acceleration. Luke knows that. He'll try and stay at the back, try and force Jackson into a long sprint as he just bounces the back wheel up the track a little, slows himself down. He doesn't want to get too close. So some good skills from both riders. Luke Blackwood, really happy in that number two position. Now he's just forcing Jackson Russell to increase the pace. It's high on the track. Jackson's going to come up, try and press it, but Blackwood goes over the top. Is he going to drop down? When's he going to drop? He's got the momentum. So as he comes into the bell, he's got about three bike lengths. He has a look over his shoulder. Jackson Russell, can he get into the slipstream and come back? Luke Blackwood, oh, he's ridden this tactically superb. Blackwood's gone. He's got four bike lengths. He can sit up. He's brought it back. It's 1-1. Very good sprinting. Luke Blackwood knew what he wanted to do. Yeah, really smart by Luke. He slowed it right down but stayed high. Forced Jackson to do a pretty much a, a track stand there and start from nothing. Well, he was well schooled up. Tim Borson gave him the plan. Luke Blackwood, 1-1. So we will go to the third ride. And of course, for the third ride, first ride, there we go, Luke Blackwood. Just being confirmed as the winner of the second ride in the semi final. So the first heat, we saw Jackson Russell on the outside. Second heat, Luke Blackwood on the top spot. So he had the option we had of riding at the back. They will draw for that position in the third ride. So it'll be interesting to see if it's swapped around what the tactics are coming up onto the track. Liam Kavner, who is one up over Jared Mann. It would be fantastic if this can go to three. Ray Sheath bringing Jared up. Ray, Ray's always got a trick or two up his sleeve. That's why he sells insurance. They get the instructions from the starter. Guess just checks they're okay. Jared Mann. We'll take the short way around, the Cote de Jour, bottom of the track. Do they get around to the back straight? So that was a good close sprint and ride number one. Kavner one up, Jared Mann. What can he do this time? He knows he's got to win it to stay in it. They both want to go through to the gold medal ride. Liam Kavner, one up, goes, well, if you're just going to let me roll through like that, that will probably suit me. He wants to slow it down. Jared Mann's not having any of it, and they're going to go into the banking. Fairly low speed, but bail down the track. So 
So, Liam Kavner winding up. Jared Mann high on the track. Hasn't got full gas, hasn't got the big speed going. So, Liam Kavner. Now, Jared Mann's coming back. He's got into the slipstream. He's just going to time it. He's going to run at the back wheel now. There goes Jared Mann. Kavner kicks those saw him coming. Jared Mann moves up. That's a little bit of a sign of desperation, trying to get some speed off the bank. And Kavner, two straight rides. So Liam Kavner, he's through. We won't know to a little bit later. On that third ride, who he will meet. Good sprinting from Liam Kavner. Jared Mann, he's getting better though. Each competition he rides, learns something else. Go back, look at it, look at the video. Liam Kavner is being confirmed. Two straight rides. Moves through to the gold final. There we see the elite men about to come onto their track for the elimination. Favourite race to watch, least favourite race to ride. That's what everyone says. I heard Rushy say that today as well. I thought they were fun. Fun requires a lot of aerobic, anaerobic, and quite a lot of fearlessness, I think. So this is going to be good. The action is always at the back. We're a little bit off the line, so... Um Try not to comment on the calls too much because the judges are right on the line. At least as they get a few wrong though, but I'm sure they don't. <laughs> judges have to make some pretty quick decisions, don't they? They do. We've got that nice big tall camera up there. I don't know if it's uh, connected to the system. That's what it's sort of there for. But, um, not along. Men's elimination. So they've had the points, had the scratch. The rider's just getting in position on the fence. So as we line them up, we've got Kian Watts. Well, that looks like uh, Tom, Tom Sexton. Sexton. Then Kian Watts. George Jackson's in the right position on the track. He hasn't got his hair cut yet, but he might later. Nick Kirkazoo. Kane Croup. West Coast, North Island. Daniel Bridgewater. Hugo Jones. Running the colours of Canterbury. Keegan Hornblow back out after a great individual pursuit. Hamish Keast. John T. Harris. Zach Patterson. Christian Rush, Dylan Cumming, test, 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 West Coast North test. Island. Is it so the elimination race. No one wants to go <clears throat> out first. I love the first lap, the neutral lap. Test, test. At the World Cups, the Nations Cups, the Olympics, the World Champs, the first lap's probably the fastest lap of the race and it's neutral. <laughs> That's right, those riders at the back on the fence. Need to do all they can to get to the front of the race. Well, is your money on, Elise? Oh. Raise it, come on, tell us, pick it. George Jackson has been riding these bunch of races absolutely on form. I can't go past that, I don't think. Can't go past him? Okie dokie, there you go. Just put a place bet on, George. I think, uh, Who are you calling? Oh, Keon Watts has got the skill and the ability and speed. But we will see. Yeah, Keon's been riding really well as well. He's um, racing for Black Spike overseas this year. Oh, he's not. Got that wrong. Last year he was with them. Um, he's changing teams. So there we go. Bell goes. So Keegan Hornblow goes, well, I'm not going to go out the back this time. I'll just ride on the front, string them out. Zach Patterson's at the back. 
Dylan Cummins as well, I think, is uh, in a spot of bother down on the inside. 25. Show you the head, the speed. 25. I don't think you quite expected it to be that fast. It's uh, you got to put a big gear on for this one. So Keegan still on the front. Tom Sexton looking comfortable. Bell goes. Zach Patterson at the back. Follows Dan Bridgewater. Keeston, a little bit of bother. He's going to maybe, oh, I thought he was going to take the Hail Mary and go down the inside. Four. Canterbury, four. 24 was the call. Matt, four. Four, four was John the T. call. Harris. John T. Harris. Oh, that was a bit of bad luck. I can't hear Jeanette through my earpiece, so it was. Yeah, interesting to see the tactics. Some of these riders wanting to ride it from the front. Others happy to sit at the back and just sprint every lap. So they roll around, it's a bit of a swap. There's George Jackson rolling around. Goes to the front. Zach Patterson in a bit of trouble. 22. 22. Yeah, so. Jesus. So Kiam Watts on the front, outside him, Tom Sexton. The 13, George Jackson, Christian Rush has got himself up into a nice position. So there he is, Hamish Keys just wants to move around, roll around the outside. That's the way, keep moving forward. You're out of trouble when you're there. Oh, Nick Kugazoo, is that Dan Bridgewater? Kugazoo, which one? Oh, that's close 11. One. 11. Number 11. Nick Kugazoo. So Nick Kugazoo was called out. Southland Dan Bridgewater, I thought 11. it was him, but it's... Uh, Dan Bridgewater's pulled out. Dan Bridgewater's pulled up. He got thought it was him, wrong. but Kugazoo was the call. Out. They will see if they neutralise the race. No, Dan Bridgewater's taken the flyer on the back. He's got a fair bit of work to do. The A3, it's tough, but that's what you, when you think you're out and you're not. 23. Kiam 23. Watts. Kiam Watts is called out. So Kiam Watts, there's my 50 bucks at the tab down the drain. Waikato, 23. So Kiam Watts just caught on the inside, just thought he was safe as houses and he looked like it. Dan Bridgewater smoked around the outside. Bell goes. Who's it going to be this time? George Jackson at the back. Oh, he nearly went through the, the graveyard shift on the inside down the bottom and took, thought better of it around the outside. He's going to have to sprint hard. Got Kane Croup. Dan Bridgewater this time. 18. That big effort from 18. earlier on. Scarred him a little bit. Dan Bridgewater comes out so... Christian Rush looking good, just sitting in there. They're talking about Hamish Keese riding very smart as well. But he's uh, in that 1-1 one -one position on the inside. Christian Rush on the outside. Kane Croup decides to move. Jules Jackson, I think he's starting to feel it a little bit. He's just going to make the run down the back straight. He waits to the straight and then goes Jules Jackson round the outside. Christian Rush has gone from being in a good position, doing a lot of trouble. So they roll round. Hugo Jones, Jules, Christian Rush. Two. Number two. No, Christian Rush comes out. That's how quickly it can change in the elimination. Tom Sexton, Hamish Keyes on the front. Keegan Hornblow round the outside. Hugo Jones, George Jackson playing a little bit of a two-up sprint game at the back. George Jackson goes, oh, maybe I've got a little bit more toe. Comes up, so is he going to get Hugo Jones? Tom Sexton. 13. So Tom Sexton. When you're on the inside and you're three back and they ease up a little bit, you just can't get over the top. You have nowhere to go. So Kamish Keese, look at the right. He's putting in. Number 10 on the front. It's got down to the last five. Looking very, very good. Keegan Hornblow. might be in trouble here. Jules Jackson round the outside, Hugo Jones, Kane Croup's got a little bit of work to do on the inside, he's going to have to push up and push really hard. Can't put on a good effort 26. there. 26. But not quite enough. 26. So he tried, but he gets, has to settle for the fifth place. Amish Keys goes, well, just let me ride around in front, that's okay, I'm happy enough with that. Keegan Hornblow. Hugo Jones decides now's the time to stand on the pedals, put George Jackson in a spot of bother at the back. 
Keegan Horn blows, he got anything, or he decides they've got to get out of there. Hamish Keast, it's on the inside, he's got to get around him. Keegan Horn blows, he got the momentum to come over the top of Hamish Keast, he has it, Keast, oh, he has to settle for fourth place, very ten. good ride. Number 10. Keegan Hornblow following up nicely after his pursuit earlier in the evening. And Hamish wasn't happy, but he did everything right. But just uh, rolled down that straight. Keegan Hornblow gets the bell, goes well. The other guys at the back are quite happy to let me roll off. George Jackson goes, oh, I have to keep up with him. Hugo Jones goes, thanks very much. I'll take the bronze. Keegan Hornblow, he is on fire. George Jackson. George Jackson has a big fan and a big Jace, Jason Allen. Said that was absolutely five, sex on wheels. Number that five. Mullet. Big Jace, he'll be glued to this, so oh, don't we miss him on the track and on the road. George Jackson got onto the back. Keegan Hornblow, he's been on fire in this race. So here we get two strong road men trying to match sprint it. George Jackson trying to control it. There he goes, he dives now. Keegan Hornblow, has he got anything left? He gets out of the saddle. George Jackson, that's a bit of a kick. And I hope you took Elise's advice and went down to the tab and put 50 bucks on him because he's taken it. She picked it. George Jackson, points race, elimination race champion. Absolute class. Exceptionally good ride. George Jackson, Keegan Hornblow, Hugo Jones. The man from Wellington, two national titles, George Jackson. Keegan Hornblow, very well ridden for the silver. Hugo Jones takes the bronze. Hamish Keese gets uh, fourth place. Kane Croup, Tom Sexton, Christian Rush, Daniel Bridgewater. The top eight in the men's elimination. Not many riders here representing Wellington, so it's nice to see George out there in those colours, even though he's living up here now. Absolutely Wellington. See our next event coming up. We've got some Kieran's. We've got the third ride of the sprint semi. Nice to see George, Keegan and Hugo there dissecting the race on the back straight. There we go, good to see George Jackson smiling. He's got it all going on. The mo, the mallet. Keegan's hurting a bit. Hugo Jones, I think that stretched the legs quite a lot. We're going to a third ride for this under-19 men's sprint competition. Luke Blackwood, Jackson Russell. So coming up, Luke Blackwood. Looks like he's drawn the inside position. Jackson Russell getting himself strapped in. So on the outside, one apiece, men's semi final.
They roll away. Luke in the marble drawer got to lead off. Position he had in the first race where Jackson Russell got the sweet run on the inside, took control. And what's Luke going to do this time? We'll see. Is he going to try and force Jackson Russell to the front? Yeah, we've seen previously that Jackson likes to use the track quite a lot, likes to flick the bike around, play a few games, so we'll see if he gets the opportunity. So Luke Blackwood. There's not a lot between these two, so if you get the timing right, you could almost, if you got up to full speed, it's going to be hard to come either right or at full gas. It's hard to get over the top of the other one, so Luke Blackwood might be reasonably confident to ride from the front. Jackson doing what Elise said, likes to throw the bike around, use the track. Luke Blackwood's not buying into it. He's just got to watch. He doesn't get bogged down on the inside. I think he's too too good for that. Jackson Russell's building the speed high on the track, and that's the danger when you're on the inside. You don't want to get caught out. Jackson Russell now has got the inside. Goes up, gives him a bit of a push up the track. Go, so they're coming into the bell. Jackson Russell's got Luke Blackwood where he wants him. Luke Blackwood's going to go well. Let's see what you got side by side. Through the 200, down the back, still shoulder to shoulder. Russell out of the seat, Blackwood on the outside. Russell's got the shorter way around the track. Luke Blackwood's fighting hard all the way to the line. They go to it. Who's going to get it? Jackson Russell takes it on the inside. Well, nice tactical sprinting on both riders. Whoever got that inside line, though, there's nothing between them. Was going to get the, the run through to the finish. Well done, Jackson Russell. Luke Blackwood. So Jackson Russell moves through to the gold ride. Luke Blackwood. That race could have easily have been the final. So Jackson Russell just being confirmed getting that from Luke Blackwood. Not much in it, so some great sprinting. Young men with a bit of speed, so hopefully they keep building on that and close the gap. So we will be moving into still some sprint events. It's Men's Karen. Elite Men's Karen. This is the final, seven to nine, so three riders. And they do this for seating. Seven to nine final. Motorbike comes up onto the track. We'll head around, warm the tyres up. So Kyo Lart would have liked to have been in the final. That's one or two here. Would have gone. I really would have liked to have been in the final. So Hayden Jack, Sebastian Lip, Kyle Lart, all capable of being in the final, but they find themselves here in the 7-10 to 10 ride off. Brendan gives the motorbike the all clear, and chugs off the line. Put a check and laughter going on the start line, so, oh, Kyle is even blowing someone a kiss. Gun goes. Okay, two rides, number one position both times behind the motorbike. Sebastian Lip, Hayden Jack. So the motorbike will build its speed up. Drop them off at about 55 kilometres an hour. And then with three to go, they can decide who wants to be seventh in the national championship. Me and Kieran's final, seven to nine. Thanks very much for joining us on Sky Sport Next. Dale Woodford and Elise Fraser.
standing in the stands, watching some very, very good not racing this evening. Tomorrow it's team's competition. So Kelly Lart decides, well, I'm going to move up the track. Sebastian Lipshakes has a little bit of a look at what, what's going on. Three up match sprint, here we go. Yeah, well, the, the uh, UCI track series was great with the three ups, and uh, this is what it is, two to go. Three sprinters. All want to get seventh. Hayden Jack goes around the outside. Sebastian Lip will tuck onto his wheel. Kelly Lark goes up the track. Gives themselves a few bike lengths to run at. So he's up onto Sebastian Lap. They're going to come in to get the bell. Kao Lark, there he goes. He's going pretty quick. And you get over the top. Well, he would have wanted to ride like that in the last round to get through to the final. But Kao Lark to Tasman. He's kicked a couple of bike lengths clear. Here comes Sebastian Lip around the outside. Can Sebastian Lip get up? He's left himself too much to do. Kao Lark will take seventh place in the National Championships. Men's Karen. Nice to see those riders out there having a bit of fun, getting stuck into each other. You've got to enjoy it. If you're not enjoying it, go find something else to do. Good fun, good competition. Big thanks to the team here. Sky Sport Next and SPI Productions for bringing you the pitches. Doing a great job. Three big sessions a day. It's not easy. Yeah, there's a cameraman down in centre with a camera sitting on his right shoulder, which is unbelievable. So, Kyle Art, Hayden Jack, uh, Sebastian Lip, Hayden Jack, that was the order. So, we now go through to the final men's Karen final track national championships. Some cheeks being puffed out. Muscles being flexed on the start line, hips being slapped. They're ready. The big boys coming up to play. Ewan Cousins is drawn number one again. Outside him, Patrick Clancy. Sam Dakin. He would definitely be the best barista in the building, certainly in the track centre. Reuben Webster, Dylan Day, Bradley Knight, top of the track. Brandon will check Bradley Knight, just adjusts the helmet. He's in six. Dylan Day, Reuben Webster, Sam Dakin, Ewan Cousins. Patrick Clancy. Well, if you're home, put your seatbelt on. Buckle into the couch. This one is going to be a cracker. Ewan Cousins, what a ride to get into the final. Patrick Clancy, Sam Dakin, Reuben Webster. Dylan Day, Bradley Knight. Five to go. You and Cousin. I'll just get as much draft as I can. You might be thinking when the motorbike winds off at 55, I'll hit them with three to go and see what happens. They're all sprinters. They might just look at each other for a little while. Sam Dakin has a look over the shoulder. Reuben Webster's tucked there. Patrick Clancy. Sits there. Bradley Knight quite happy at the back, just keeping an eye on things. Dylan Day. Dylan Day goes, well, I'll take the little run up the inside. Reuben Webster moves around the outside. Moves in front of Sam Dakin. Patrick Clancy. Ewan Cousins goes, who's coming? Reuben Webster. So Reuben Webster puts himself into a good position, taking some control behind Ewan Cousins. Patrick Clancy, Sam Dakin has a look at Dylan Day. He's wondering where Bradley Knipe is. Sam Dakin, well, I thought they might have been lining up behind Dakin, but they know he's got plenty of toe. Oh, Bradley Knipe just slides through there. That was a good move. Went through like a piece of slippery soap. Down the back straight he goes. 
takes control from the front. Bradley Knife, Sam Dakin. Here comes Sam Dakin into the bell. So but Dakin winds up full gas. Bradley Knife's fighting hard. Ruben Webster's tucked right in there. Then Clancy. So down the back, Dakin's got them in Indian file. Bradley Knife's trying to come back at him, but Sam Dakin's too quick, too strong. Sam Dakin takes it. Bradley Knife charges half a bike length behind. Good ride from Ruben Webster to get the bronze. Well, if we can see that, the, the gap that Bradley Knight went through to take control, that was some ride. Sam Dakin finishing with impressive speed there. Speed to burn, Sam Dakin. Great ride. Picks up another national Kieran title. So uh, he's done it before. Sprint, Kieran double. He's done it again. Sam Dakin from Auckland. Superb performance, Bradley Knight, Reuben Webster. Dylan Day, you and Cousins. Wow, they all just, uh, Patrick Clancy. All right, is so deserving to be in that final. Judges just checking the final placings. No doubt about the, the first three. There we go, Sam Dakin being confirmed. Bradley Knight, Reuben Webster, Patrick Clancy getting up for fourth so close from Dylan Day and Ewan Cousins. Well, Sam Dakin come to the championships. One goal in mind to win both these individual sprint events. Job's done. Tick that one off. Now I'll be focusing on the Oceana Games. Great to see him in good form. Of course, uh, be in action in the team sprint tomorrow here at the final day of the Track National Championships. Big thanks for joining us on Sky Sport Next. And of course to our sponsors and supporters, Skoda, Amber Guarding Centre, and the funding provided by Trillion Trust. And the 19 men's sprint final, first ride coming up. Riders are on the apron. Jared Mann, Luke Blackwood. So Jared Mann will be hoping that third ride has burnt a little bit of the edge off Luke Blackwood. Great semi. Unlucky. Jared Mann coming up onto the track. Bronze medal final, best of three. Three rides if required. Both men would like to go through in two straight. Jared's dad's been working tirelessly over the four days of competition down there on the timing, on the timing team. But for this bronze final, he's standing up, having a look. So we see Luke Blackwood. He's taken the, drawn the inside position for this first ride. Next ride, it'll be swapped around. So Jared Mann. Would have come across Luke Blackwood a few times. Auckland Waikato, of course, racing here quite regularly on the Velodrome. Jared Mann just sitting high on the track. He's got good skill at low speed on that banking. Scary if you come down here and you watch them training, just practicing riding around slow. Luke Blackwood 
Just going up, pressing Jared Mann, not leaving him a lot of room to move around. Jared Mann goes through, Luke Blackwood still winding it up high on the track. Mann just a little bit higher. Can he use the momentum? Goes into the bell, he's got the inside. Has he been able to push through? They're both riders are Jared Mann, he may have got the run on the inside. He took the inside position, the door was there and he got the gap. Now can Luke Blackwood use that speed he's got to come around over the top. They're fighting to the line, Luke Blackwood. Yes, he kicks clear. Takes it just over half a bike length. No problem at all, Luke Blackwood. So there we go, Luke Blackwood just kicks up onto the hip and then comes up over the top of Jared Mann in the straight. Takes it comfortably. So Luke Blackwood, one up in the best of three. He's looked very good in the competition. Jared Mann goes back. Sounds like Jared Mann has got a warning as well for riding on the blue. So just uh, probably a little bit unlucky to get that, get that warning. Is, uh, he went down to commit to the racing line to take it and... Um, Luke's sort of also going for it at the same time, but it's the it's the rules. Didn't affect Luke Blackwood. Come out, took the ride, one up, best of three. As we see, action Jackson Russell clipping in, doing up the G-Race straps, locking the feet in. Liam Kavner. So Liam Kavner in the marble drawer. It's got the inside for the first ride. Jackson Russell. Brendan lets the riders go in this under 19 men's sprint final. Jackson Russell. Both riders in the colours of Waikato Bay are plenty. Jackson Russell on the front. He has the white socks. Sorry, he has the black socks. He's at the back. We'll get it right. I'll give you the right ones first. Liam Kavner on the front and the white socks. Jackson Russell at the back, the black socks. And then with the white gloves on as well. Liam Kavner, not getting sucked into any games at the moment. There's Jackson Russell coming up. He loves to do that, try and press the rider one day. Some big guy will come down on top of him and hit him hard, but not tonight. So Jackson Russell moves Liam Kavner around the track. Liam Kavner's seen it all before. And decides to go around the outside. Got some momentum, got the gap. Now has Jackson Russell got anything? No, Liam Kavner's just kicking clear. There's the bike race done and dusted down the back straight. Liam Kavner's going to go one up in the best of three in the gold medal ride. Liam Kavner. Didn't get sucked into the games, Liam Kavner. So he goes one up in the best of three in the 19 men's sprint. First ride, first blood, Liam Kavner.
So the next event on the track will be the men's points, but before that we will have the awards presentation for the elimination, elite men's elimination. the second ride and then the 19 men sprints will probably come up before the and the 19 men's points race so there he goes Liam Kavanagh riding around Just saw him heading out last night he was pretty happy with the way he was going So they're just setting up uh, for the presentations. Presentation down in the infield. So we'll just head on down to Jeanette for the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, is it just us? Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the 2022 Track National Championship Elite Men's Elimination will now take place. The medals will be presented by Michelle Henderson, representing the Cycling New Zealand Board. In third place, and the winner of the bronze medal, representing Canterbury, Hugo Jones. In second place, and the winner of the silver medal, representing Tasman, Keegan Hornblow. And in first place in the winner of the gold medal and your 2022 Elite Men's Elimination National Champion, representing Wellington, George Jackson. George receives the national jersey and a native plant from our proud sponsors, Amber Garden Centre. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join us and show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2022 Track National Championships. Ladies 
Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the 2022 Track National Championship Elite Men's Karen will now take place. We welcome again Michelle Henderson from the Cycling New Zealand Board to present medals. In third place, and the winner of the bronze medal, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Ruben Webster. In second place, and the winner of the silver medal, representing Southland, Bradley Knipe. And in first place, and the winner of the gold medal, the recipient of a national jersey, your 2022 Elite Men's Care and National Champion, representing Auckland, Sam Dakin. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us and show your appreciation for the place getters in the 2022 Elite Men's Karen. We will now present the Warren T. Johnston Cup. The Warren T. Johnston Cup will be presented to the elite male with the most points across the time trial, scratch race, and caring combined. We will ask Michelle Henderson from the Cycling New Zealand Board to present the trophy. I'm very proud to say the winner of the Warren T. Johnston Cup for 2022, representing Auckland, is Sam Dakin. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in congratulating Sam on winning the Warren T. Johnston Cup. Thank you. Awesome. Who's got the beers? I'm ready. We are catching up with George Jackson, um, just proudly wearing his second national jersey of the competition. How did that go for you today? Yeah, it was good fun, battling it out with the boys. So yeah, it was good. We've talked a little bit to others, just sort of around um, what the, what the, how they got into cycling. What is your favorite, was your first memorable memory cycling down in Wellington? Um, down in Wellington on the bump, bumpy track, um, Gary Gibson, my first coach, and the guy that still comes to every track nationals of all the Wellington crew, he got me into it. And I just remember going around Wellington track, bumping along and getting blown around with the wind. What does it mean to you to, to now have kids looking up to you? Um, how do you carry that? Yeah, it's uh, pretty cool because that's how I started in Wellington. We had a pretty good, um, a few older boys that I always looked up to and they helped me on. So um, yeah, I'm trying to be like them and teach the young Wellington kids. I've had a few messages come through. You want to talk to us, uh, how do you cut your hair? Um, yeah, so uh, I do it myself. I get the smiggle scissors out, just uh, push it down, straight across, get the number one out, shave it nice and clean, and yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, it's going good. You keep that up. Um, native plant from Amber Garden Centre. Um, you going to make use of that? Yeah, yeah, they will go into my garden at home. I've got a lot of f fruit trees and my um, house is nicknamed the orchard. So, yeah, it will be put to good use. Awesome. Congratulations, George. Thank you. <laughs> Sam Dakin, back-to-back -back elite sprint titles. Yes, here in titles, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> We got there, we got there. Yeah, back to back, it's awesome. Yeah, it was a big goal this week was to defend the Karen title, so really happy to, to walk away. 
And talk us through the build-up. So um, off the Olympics in August, um, talk us through how, how you've got here and you're obviously in some form heading into Oshies. Yeah, I think came off the Olympics, probably a bit disappointed with our overall performance and obviously a tough time for everyone on and off the bike and don't even want to do MIQ again. So just uh, put my head down in October and, and put together six months of uh, no miss days, no miss reps and it all stacks up. So turn up here and carry this form to Oshies and let's see what happens. And you're another one of our many cyclists who have a strong family supporting you, um, and hopefully they should be watching online as well, as you know, spectators here today. But what do you want to say to the family, particularly through these last few months? Oh, just massive thank you. Like mum, dad, brother, sister, they're the, the best supporters they will be watching. I think dad's doing a mountain bike race tomorrow, so he's probably watching on his phone, and then mum, Georgia and Harrison are down in Christchurch here. So uh, I wish they were here, but we'll see the emojis. Yeah. Yeah. We're very close to welcoming spectators, very close to welcoming spectators back, so it should be awesome. And Warren T. Johnston Cup, um, that was a good surprise for you, but, you know, it's sort of an all-rounder um, award that we, we can get to present in memory of Warren T. Johnston. So what does that mean to win, you know, taking everything into account this week? Yeah, I think this kind of just rewards consistent performance, really, and to add my name to this cup and the Sprint Cup was, was a special one, looking at the names on there with Sam and um, Eddie and even John Andrews, who, who coached me back in the day. It's, yeah, it's a special, it's just good to be back racing and excited for the year ahead. And you're now your name's starting to get on these trophies, so it's fantastic. We're all very proud of you, how far you've come, and um, good luck for Oshies. Thanks so much. Cheers, guys. Thank you. So the action back on the track, nice to hear from George and Sam. We have a yarn to George, see how the fruit trees are coming along, get some advice. I'm struggling with my lime tree, gets lots of leaves but no limes. So he seems to have all the tricks. And here we go. Jared Mann has got it all in front of him. He's got to win this one to stay alive, to take that bronze medal. If he wants to get, get it, he's got to win this. Luke Blackwood, he'll just go. He'll want to go too straight, get it in the pocket, and go, job's done. That's the evening finished. Jared Mann comes up. Ray Sheath pushing him up the track. Tim Pawson with Luke Blackwood. So Jared just looks straight ahead. Sprinters often just stare at each other, stare down. Luke's looking, but Jared's not buying into it, just focused on whatever he's got to do. Wants to stay alive. So he's gone. He's gone out of the blocks. He's going, well, well, we'll just see. We'll do something a little bit different. Nothing to say you can't do that in sprinting. So Jared Mann goes, well, there's two to go. Luke Blackwood's just being patient, holding back. Jared Mann now, oh you guys have got nothing to lose. I'm not quite as quick maybe over the last but now. So Luke Blackwood gets onto the back wheel. Jared Mann, how much has he taken out of the Aucklander? So down the back there goes Luke Blackwood. He's going to say thanks for that. Good to get it over and done with nice and quick. I'll just go a little bit quicker now around the outside. And he'll come down. Two straight rides to take the bronze medal. Luke Blackwood. Well, why not? Jared Mann. We've seen it work before. Let's go from the gun and see what happens. Luke Blackwood didn't panic. He's got into the groove. So Luke Blackwood being confirmed as the winner of the bronze medal. Jared Mann, very fine performance, taking fourth place in the under-19 men's sprint.
So there we go. Jackson Russell. That's right. Comes up. Inside position, is he? Is he going to go right to the top? He's on the inside. Liam Kavner, one up. And this best of three, so Jackson Russell. He's got it all in front of him. He's got the front position. He'll want to stay there. Liam Kavner. Did it fairly comfortably in the first ride. This time, Jackson Russell. See what he's uh, figured out. How can he get back into this competition? The answer's pretty simple. Get my front wheel across the line first, and we'll go to another one. We'll go to a, a decider. The two on the board. Jackson Russell starts to move the bike around a little bit. Kavner, not worried about that, just trying to force the pace a little, keep the pace, keep the pace high. Jackson Russell doesn't want to get caught out, so he's staying low. You know, he moves up the track. Liam Kavner gives him a little bit of a flick, makes him go. So Kavner on the outside just flexes the fingers a little bit. Jackson Russell. Moves around, moves around. There comes Liam Kavner. There he goes. He kicks. He's get up. He's got even. He's up to the shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. In the last 50 metres, Liam Kavner's going to come over the top. Too good. Takes the title. Two straight rides. Liam Kavner, your under 19 and men's sprint champion. Jackson Russell settles for the silver. Well done to Liam Kavner. He's looked good. Had to work hard against Luke Blackwood. So an 11.3, 63.2k an hour. Liam Kavner, there you go, confirmed. Taking that out. Two straight rides on the 19 men's national sprint champion. So we go line them up on the fence. It's Jackson White in the colours of Mid-South Canterbury. Oliver Watson Palmer. Matthew Davis. Darcy Sanders. Edward Pawson. Ronan Sheeran. Jack Gillingham. Maui Morrison. Austin Norwell. Charlie Hegan. Marshall Irwood. James Hannigan. Wilson Hannon. Jesse Willis. And then down on the apron, we've got Lewis Johnson, Joel Douglas, and Jonathan Fish. So it's the men's points race, 20 kilometres.
80 laps, the under 19, eight sprints every 10 laps, double points on the last. Thanks for joining us on Sky Sport next. Start is happy and we're underway 80 laps. Five, three, two and one of the sprints. Double that on the last 20 points if you take a lap. Jonathan Fish moves up, has a little look. Maui Morrison follows. Under 19 men's points race is always very exciting to watch. I think we had around six riders within one second of each other in the kilo and I think about six riders within four seconds in the pursuit. So definitely a few people putting their hands up for this race. Yeah, three for Auckland there. Joel Douglas in the white helmet, the white shoes. Edward Pawson is on the shinier, or the black shiny helmet. Goes through, he's on the look, the black shiny helmet behind him on the blue look. It'll be Austin Neural. Austin, number 62, in the matte black helmet. So three from Auckland. What can they do in the race? A few from Waikato as well. Mid South Canterbury have two. Two very good riders in Fish and White. Maui Morrison. He's in the red helmet with the white stripe. Just uh, four from the back on the in inside. Jack Dillingham, three back, outside, and the other rider from Waikato. Matt Davis, just towards the front, high on the track. Joel Douglas moves up, leaves it to Darcy Sanders. Charlie Hegan as well, there for Canterbury. So the riders are starting to get interested in the first sprint. Eight of them, so you don't have to panic. You don't have to score in each one, but you want to try and get the board ticking over. Jack Ellenham goes through. Man from Tasman. Lanigan, oh, he swung up. Ronan Sheeran. Matthew Davis moves up. Lewis Johnson just goes to the front. Jackson White sits in behind, moves up onto the wheel of Davis. Jonathan Fish gets some momentum off the banking. Gets sides well. We might as well go for a long one. He's got a couple of bike links. Lewis Johnson, Mary Morrison, Ronan Sheeran going after him. The bell goes here and Crillington rings the bell. So Fish, they've closed up on him. So uh, he's lit a few matches early. Lewis Johnson looking comfortable. Mary Morrison now. Big run coming on the outside. Waikato have got two, three riders there going for the points. Lewis Johnson just nipping Jonathan Fish. We'll wait for the judges to call it Fish. Goes, well, I'm just going to keep it on. Now Morrison sits there. We'll see what he does when Fish pulls up. He goes up also. Ronan Sheeran goes through. Take okay, first points. We'll wait. See what they say. See what comes up on the board. Pretty tight in the opening sprint. Jackson White moves high on the track. Ronan Sheeran drops down. Interesting the different tactics. Obviously Jonathan Fish wants to hit out early and get some points. And I think there'll be riders that'll just hide for a few sprints and then try and take a lap later on. So Pawson drops onto the wheel of Douglas. Yeah, they keep the speed up. There'll be some elastic snapping. There's already a couple of gaps. Pawson puts the pace on. Jonathan Fish has a little bit of a look. Goes, I need some help. Canterbury, oblige. Oliver Watson Palmer takes them up, no one interested. Joel Douglas, as all good bunch race riders do, they just see in the swing out, they roll through, just keep it ticking over, moves up at his own tempo. Pawson follows, as does Morrison. Jackson White goes through, Ronan Sheeran follows him. So always dangerous, little move like this. They have a look over. Charlie Hegan. 
So they've got a little bit of a gap. Are they going to work or are they going to miss around? Oh, they're missing around. They've got the gap. They should put their heads down. Charlie Higgin does. Ronan Sheeran, Jackson White. Lewis Johnson moves up. Matthew Davis takes over. Well, they would have had um, a good length of the track if they hadn't. Lewis Sheeran goes, no, that's enough. So he leaves the man from Canterbury out there. White does the same. So Charlie Hegan swung up, no one there, decides, well, I'm just going to keep it going. Not a bad idea at the moment. Lewis Johnson using his pursuiting form to uh, pick the pace up, wants to keep everyone in contention, but he needs to score some points as well. No good just doing all the chasing. Matthew Davis swings up. Joel Douglas looking very relaxed. Charlie Hegan is going to come round, get the bell this lap. Yeah, so he needs the points, doesn't he? He's uh, gone pretty hard. Needs the reward, needs to get the five and then settle back in and recover. Oliver Watson Palmer chasing him down. Yeah, Oliver Watson Palmer's looking very strong. He's going to certainly pick up the minor points. Well, good work for the young man from Canterbury, Joel Douglas, Oliver Watson Palmer, Maui Morrison. Now Charlie's got to like start breathing through the helmet, get the ears, get some ear into the ears and try and get on. It hurt a lot on the paces on and the man that's applying the pressures, Joel Douglas of Auckland. Joel Douglas, here he goes. Jonathan he had an outstanding Fish. pursuit, so we know he can go. Yeah, we've seen him lap the field here before. Pawson just rides the tempo on the front. He's looking relaxed. Jackson White. So Jackson White trying to uh, keep things going. Then Southland, Oliver Watson Palmer. He's going to put in a big turn. Oliver Watson Palmer, Maui Morrison. He'll have to do the same around the banking. Joel Douglas is just cruising and he's hurting them. Those behind are starting to hurt a little bit, trying to close the gap. Lewis Johnson chases. He's going to bring it back. Joel Douglas moves up, has a little look, see what damage he's done quite a bit. Jack Gillingham. Yeah, that we moved, saw I think about four riders spat out the back there. Yeah, well, he did a lot of damage to me. He went and uh, took a big effort. Jackson White to put in a big turn. Lewis Johnson to bring it back. So now it's uh, a little bit of a truce. The troops just looking. Five to the next sprint. 55 to go. Lewis Johnson drops down the track. Look at this. This is a nice time to sneak away. Put your head down, Lewis. And uh, there's some guys that's looking. They're wondering. They're hurting. So Lewis Johnson tucks in. Jackson White swings up. Paulson swings the elbow. Joel Douglas goes up. So he's going to chase. Oh, Lewis decides to go up as well. Oh, Lord, Watson Palmer. Jack Gillingham rolls through on the inside. Matthew Davis comes back out onto the track after a little, little problem. So he's had, you're allowed, of course, some time out. Usually about three laps, and when the pace is on, you've got to get whatever you've got to get done, done quickly. The mechanics have to work over time. It's 52 to go. Maui Morrison drops in on Edward Pawson's wheel. Lewis Johnson, big man from Southland. Marshall Irwood. Oliver Watson Palmer just gives me a Morrison a little bit of room. They're going to come in to get the bell. Well, we know Edward Pawson. He'll just sit on the front. Here goes Oliver Watson Palmer around the outside. Oh, Joel Douglas is tracking him. Jack Gillingham's looking really good as well. Edward Pawson's fighting for that point with Maui Morrison. Joel Douglas says thanks very much. Nice work, Jack Gillingham, getting up for the, the two. Mary Morrison gets the point. Oh, I thought he might have been keen to keep it going. Matthew Davis goes, well, now's the time. The big boys have had a bit of a hit out, so let's see. Good work, Matthew Davis. Straight after the sprint, and they're all looking. Nice time to go. Jonathan Fish goes. Lewis Johnson plays the policeman. Sits there on Jonathan Fish. Lewis Johnson goes through just at a tempo. Not worried. He's got Matthew Davis out front. 49. 
Now Lewis Johnson goes well. I might get after my teammate. Fish sits up. And that's all Lewis Johnson needed. So Lewis Johnson's gone. Now this is going to have to cause a reaction. Who's going to chase? Joel Douglas swings up. 5-3-2-1. Douglas taking the first sprint. Lewis Johnson. Oh, Matthew Davis can't go with him. So Lewis Johnson's put the hammer down this time. Looking really good, Lewis Johnson. That's the way to go. He's on the Argon tonight. Man from St. Peter's College next door to the velodrome. Awesome young man's come up through there. He did a fair bit of swimming over there to build the engine. Loves the cycling. And he's just getting better and better. So he's got half a lap. So Lewis Johnson's made his intentions clear. I'll try and get the 20 points. Sitting on the tops on those uh, enduro bars. Looking comfortable. Even the cameraman's struggling to just keep track of him as he's a blur around the track. Lewis Johnson. Now they're all looking. Where is he? No one's gone. Ronan Sheeran in the bunch. There, there's Lewis Johnson. And you can see, there's the wide shot. Lewis Johnson. It's got them in his sights. It hasn't taken him long. Elise Fraser, he's done a good ride, but Joel Douglas is going to make it tough. Yeah, Joel Douglas is currently sitting at the top of the leaderboard on eight points with Oliver Watts and Palmer behind him in second. But Lewis Johnson's on three points, and he's about to take an extra 20. Yeah, so he's going to go to 23. He's got the lap. Very fine ride from Lewis Johnson with 43 to go. He closes up. Well done, Lewis Johnson's got the lap. He moves on to the back of Ronan Sharon. He's just got to watch this group doesn't get away from him. I think they'll give him the lap because it hadn't split when he made the contact. So it's been confirmed. Now Jackson White goes. Matthew Davis goes, it's not for me tonight. Lewis Johnson just relaxed down the back. He's on the wheel of Ronan Sheeran, but the pace is on out front. So ja Jackson White takes the sprint points. Joel Douglas, Maui Morrison, Edward Pawson goes, well, we'll just, no, we're not going to keep it on. So they all sit up. Then Lewis Johnson's just cruising around at the back. He doesn't have to worry about doing anything else. Just stays in contention. The race eases. Who's going to be next to attack? Well, I reckon Lewis Johnson will go again. He'll go with anything that goes. He did that with ease, and he is looking really comfortable out there. Bit of a mistake from Joel Douglas to let him go. There we go, Jackson White, Joel Douglas, Mario Morrison, Edward Pawson. And there's the leaderboard. Lewis Johnson with the lap, 23. Joel Douglas, 11. Oliver Watson, Palmer, Mario Morrison, Jackson White, Charlie Hegan, Jonathan Fish. It's still tied after two sprints. So he's got the 20, but he can't afford to just sit back now. Lewis Johnson's still got to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Remember, double points on the last, 5-3-2-1. and one. The other points scored in the points race. So at least he can't afford to just sit there and not take any more points. She agrees. Yeah, still 36 laps to go. So there's still a lot of time and a lot of action to come. So they've settled down a little bit, but straight away, Jack Gillingham goes well. We'll just see if we can keep the momentum going. Edward Pawson, Ronan Shearing. So Edward Pawson sees his opportunity, 35 on the board. Just turn the heat up a little bit. There's a little bit of a lull, there's a few tired legs. Jack Gillingham down the back. Matthew Davis just trying to pull the group back up. Pawson. He's got some points. He doesn't want to use all his energy, just trying to get away. He's got to keep the scoreboard ticking over and go with the right move, and this could be it. There's Joel Douglas weaving his way through. Maui Morrison stuck like Velcro to him. Jackson White, Oliver Watson, Palmer. Darcy Sanders giving chase as well. Maui Morrison takes over on the front. There's 33 to go. Jackson White. Where's Lewis Johnson? He's tucked in there nicely on the wheel of Darcy Sanders. Race leader takes over at the front, Maui Morrison. Oh, 
Well, Lewis Johnson doing everything right, defending the lead. He's got to cover the moves. He's got a 10-point advantage at the moment. But Joel Douglas, don't give him a bike length. He's a dangerous. Oliver Watson Palmer also. Bell goes. Jackson White goes through the inside. Lewis Johnson just let him go through. No problem. As long as I get a point, I'll be okay. He's watching Joel Douglas. Jackson White hits out. Jackson White round the outside. Joel Douglas going to try and come over the top. He's got a big kick at the end. Oh, I think uh, White held that on the inside. We're on the bit of an angle. Douglas threw the bike, so he might have got it. Lewis Johnson just keeps the momentum going. They all follow him up the track. 29 to go. Lewis Johnson in the box seat. Well, we saw yesterday in the under 19 points race, Shauna Gray, with 12 laps to go, looked like it was in the bag. Amelia Sykes pulled a lap out, won the race, so you can't snooze. And here we see Darcy Sanders gone off the front, trying to do just that, take a lap. Oh, this young man, he deserves something. Darcy Sanders, he's raced his heart out at these championships. He really deserves a break. He's throwing everything into it. And he's got good momentum. He's just got to stay nice and smooth. Mary Morrison goes through. And his Canterbury teammate, he'll just uh, ride up the track. Oliver Watson Palmer takes over, but of course, Darcy Sanders nearly got half a lap. He's chipping away. Darcy's into his rhythm, and the bunch doesn't look like it's chasing with much urgency. It's just timing it now, isn't it? Keeping the pace. You know when the bell goes, they're going to sprint hard. And then as soon as they ease up, you've got to put a bit down. Doesn't need to panic. Now Morrison and his teammate rolls through. What I love about Canterbury, they might not like each other really, or they might be good friends, but Canterbury riders very rarely chase Canterbury riders. So Darcy Sanders looking comfortable out there. He's just got to, he's got to pick up the points first and foremost and then just keep it going. It really hurts. The legs, the legs are straining. Hamish Ferguson will be watching from home, screaming at his computer screen. Darcy out there. He'll be on the edge of his seat, Ferg. Don't have another pie, though. One of the great coaches in New Zealand cycling, Hamish Ferguson. With over 100 national champions to his name. Olympians. World champions. Yeah, quite a few accolades. Darcy's definitely in good hands. Well, he's the bell goes, the bell. so the five's looking good. So he's just got to find the rhythm, get the points. Then the bunch, if they sit up, he might be able to open the gap a little bit. Darcy Sanders, he's hurting. The, the body's working hard. He deserves the five. Pawson's chasing hard. Well, it's not Pawson. Austin Yule, then Pawson. Jackson White. So Darcy got the five, but the lights have gone out a little bit. He's got to recover and get onto the back of this quickly. Oh, that's hurt him, those five points. So he'll be hoping it just settles down. Looks at the scoreboard. How many laps to go? He got the sprint, no doubt about that. We'll update the leaderboard. Lewis Johnson on 25. Joel Douglas, 14. Jackson White on 11. Oliver Watson Palmer on 7. So that's pretty tight. Lewis Johnson, nice little buffer at the moment, but he can't relax too much. And he's not. He's off the front again. Lewis Johnson. Well, that's the way to ride these. Don't just take, be satisfied with one lap. He's gone with Jackson White. Mary Morrison swings the elbow. Asks for uh, Charlie Hegan to go through. So Charlie Hegan has got the momentum. Though they're spread out. There's 16 to go. Jackson White. There's the front of the race. The green, Jackson White. Lewis Johnson, the race leader. 
Then we have two chasing, Maui Morrison, Charlie Hegan. That pair out in front are working really nicely together. Swinging up every half lap. Yeah, well, Jackson White in that third position. He knows he can get a silver if he can go with Lewis Johnson, but he's sitting up. He's leaving Lewis Johnson go because of the big move. Charlie is trying to pick up the pace. So Lewis Johnson, well, 14 to go. He goes, I'll just see, just ride out here again. If you don't want to come with me, I'll just go by myself. Lewis Johnson, well, he's on form tonight, just floating on the pedals. Jackson White has to work to bring it back. Yeah, so Jackson White moves up. Lewis Johnson goes up, goes, well, we've got four, four away, four's better than two. They've just got to work together now. There's only 13 to go. Jackson White knows that, two sprints. Now they might have uh, worked it out, that they've got the gap. They've all got points. Lewis Johnson, well, he, does, he only needs one each lap and he'll be okay. If he can get a few, a few more than that, it's a bonus. He's in the box seat. Joel Douglas back in that chasing group. So uh, length of the straight between them. Oliver Watson Palmer swings up as the race leader, Lewis Johnson, gets the bell. Jackson White, Maui Morrison, Charlie Hegan. Southland trying to get something going, but there's some tired legs out there. Lewis Johnson's though, they're as fresh as a daisy. Here's Jackson White coming around over the top, trying to take the points. He's going to get the five. Well, it's tight on the line. We'll still leave it to the judges. I think Jackson White might have just nipped it. They've got back into the groove pretty quickly. Ronan Shearing putting in a big move, trying to get across to the leaders. Nine to go. So the boys out front, they want to keep the pace on. Yeah, down to already nine to go. That's a fast under-19 men's race. They haven't been hanging around at all. So there's Jackson White got the sprint from Lewis Johnson, Murray Morrison, Charlie Hegan. Jackson White moves up. Lewis Johnson takes over. Murray Morrison tucked in there. Ola Watson, Palmer, Jonathan Fish trying to bring up the main group. But Murray Morrison takes them down the back. Ronan Sheeran, Charlie Hegan, Jackson White, Lewis Johnson. So these are the boys with a bit of petrol left in the tank. Oh, Ronan Sheeran, the head drops. He goes, well, I just can't keep going at this pace and this distance. He's had a great championships. So Lewis Johnson, Jackson White, one and two on the scoreboard. So even with double points on the last lap, Lewis Johnson can't be beaten. Not now, six to go. He won't lose a lap. But Maui Morrison needs some points. He's sitting there in fourth. He's on, uh, I can't quite see that, for eight points. So he really wants points in this one. He'd like to take them. He'll really need the 10. Oh, they're back up. They've closed up. Jack Gillingham got back in. Oliver Watson, Palmer. The big white helmet. Jonathan Fish behind him. Joel Douglas. Joel Douglas goes, well, I'm in third place. I might want the silver medal. Four to go. Double points on the last, and it's tight for the minor placings. 16, 14, 8. Separate. Second through to fourth. So placings are all important with three to go. Lewis Johnson doesn't have to worry. Mum and Dad at home can celebrate. Lewis Johnson, he's just got to stay upright. He's just got to finish. He's allowed a couple of laps out, three laps or something. He's just on the front. They're all following the race leader. They come around this corner and they're going to have two to go. Two to go, 500 metres left in the final race of the evening. 20 kilometre and the 19 men's points race. It's been a beauty. Lewis Johnson pulled out the lap. Oliver Watson Palmer's going to lead it out. Joel Douglas, Jackson White, Maui Morrison. Joris Johnson's fighting hard. Just to hold the wheel. I'm not surprised the legs are a bit tired. Oliver Watson Palmer. Joel Douglas looking comfortable. Mary Morrison, he's going to have to bite the teeth and follow Jackson White all the way around. No, Jackson White, he's got up onto the back wheel. Joel Douglas is going to come over the top of Oliver Watson Palmer on the line. Joel Douglas takes the final sprint, gets the 10 points. So we'll have a look. We'll see. We'll wait. I think that takes Jackson and Joel up to 
both on 24 points. Yeah, so Joel with the better placing in the last sprint. We'll, Just still uh, wait and see what the judges we'll, say. Yeah, see what, see what comes up on the board. Good, very good points race. Congratulations to Lewis Johnson. Very fine ride from the young man from Waikato. National title. That'll put him on the honours board at St. Peter's. Yeah, that was classy. It's very difficult to take a, a lap on the field. Definitely with a field of this calibre. So it was great that he went out and stuck to his race plan and brought it home. Very classy performance. As I said, I've watched him since he was a little fella out there racing on school's night racing. There we go. Joel Douglas got the 10 from Oliver Watson Palmer. Jackson White, Maui Morrison. So we'll just wait for the final score to come up on the board just to confirm the minor placings. No doubt about the man that dominated it, though. Lewis Johnson. Joel Douglas. Congratulating him on a fine ride. Saw Joel Douglas do that, I think, last year. Man of the moment, Lewis Johnson, taking the under-19 men's points race to go with his individual pursuit medal. A fine championships. He will be on track for a junior world spot with the form he's showing. So the boys come down off the track. Some riders putting in a great effort there. Ray Sheath working overtime, getting the bikes off the stairs. There we go, there's the final results. It was tight, wasn't it? Lewis Johnson, 28 points. Joel Douglas on 24. Jackson White on 20. Oliver Watson Palmer in fourth on 13 points. Mary, Mo Mary Morrison, fifth on 10. Charlie Hegan, Jonathan Fish. That's the top seven. Well, Lewis Johnson, he needed that lap to take it off Joel Douglas by four points. And uh, Matt Davis, congratulating the good training buddies. You can see the strain, put a lot of effort in. It's been a big old week for these boys and they've definitely raced their hearts out over the week. It's going to be exciting to see what happens in the team events tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's just so good to see someone work so hard and get that big reward. Lewis Johnson, well, he can be proud of that ride. My dad can be super proud. He's a great kid, one of the nicest uh, you, you could ever meet. And the super performance just shows nice guys can win. Oh, look at that, Steph's down there playing paparazzi. <laughs> Done a great job, part of the Cycling New Zealand events team. Steph Steps, we call her. It's a bit cute. in an interview out for social media. Well, it's been another great night's racing here at the Track National Championships. Big thanks to Cycling New Zealand and the events team for another great day. To all the officials down there, another big day. Day four is done and dusted. One to go, people. Doing a really fine job at these national championships. Of course, under slightly different format with the red light settings. Stephen's just taken his hat off and put it on the track. So the track is officially closed when the orange cone comes out. And uh, we're just going to 
will be, once uh, the riders have recovered, we will be heading down to the presentation. Here we go. The racing line track's closed for the evening. Damn, I was keen to do a few laps. <laughs> Well, the highlight of the day, I would have to say, would be Ronnie Borter's ride. National championship, third fastest in the world. All Absolutely time, outstanding. Third best. That's uh, got to be the championship highlight so far, but some fantastic racing right across the evening, right across the afternoon. Uh, some young kids just giving it absolutely everything and seeing them try things as riders that have tried and not succeeded, but good to, if you don't try, you don't know. And be aggressive in attack. It's just uh, seeing Lewis doing what he did there, having the confidence. So I'm sure Adrian Hichvari has had a word in his ear. St. Peter's looking after the cycling on how to ride these. It's the American Olympian now living here. Married to Rushi Buchanan, the earlier commentator in the women's session. Yeah, Rushi did a great job. Lewis on the rollers now, warming down. Maui Morrison. Back tomorrow for some teams racing. Yeah, I'd be interested to see who, uh, what that um, overall points leaderboard is looking like. So we're going to come down to the wire tomorrow. Pretty close, is it? Last I checked it, it was. Canterbury in the mix, are they, Elise? Yeah, the master set us up nicely. Good, there we Stephen Woods. Woods, he would have been on <laughs> fire down there, picking up a national title. That's right. Nationals number 43. Started when he was seven. Wow. Not quite. No, great, great performance. Good to see the masters. Great to see guys like Stephen Woods. Still racing, 43 nationals. I think uh, Richie McLaughlin for BMX has done something similar. So we'll start off tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. here on Sky Sport Next. It'll be the under-17 girls team's pursuit qualifying, followed by under-17 boys. Then we'll have 500-meter team sprint qualifying. So that'll be the Saturday morning session. Saturday afternoon we'll be back at midday and that will be with the elite and under 19 teams pursuit qualifying, women's under 19 teams sprint qualifying, elite and under 19, that's the afternoon and then at 2pm it'll be elite men, team sprint and teams pursuit qualifying, elite and under 19 men and tomorrow evening it's the finals and that'll start at 4.30pm. So it's just the juniors that are, the, are back in the evening because they've got qualifying. Of course, the others, the number of teams, straight finals. Anyway, we'll work it out. It could all change. We'll pivot. That's the cool word these days. We'll pivot. So they're just getting set up down in the infield for the presentation. The under 19 men's points race. And, a, and the sprints. And the 19 sprints, so a couple of presentations. Liam Kavner, Lewis Johnson down there, relaxing. Lewis and Jackson White heading over. So once again, a huge thanks to Skoda, the Amber Garden Centre.
and the Trillion Trust for their support of these championships. Sky Sport, SBI Productions for the work they've done. The camera crew working out there in the heat, working tirelessly. Doing a fantastic job. So big thanks to Cycling New Zealand Performance Partners, Southern Spars, Cask Helmets, Lacole Cycling Apparel for the National Champion Jerseys, Victoria Tyres, Gidret, of course, Skoda, the Amber Garden Centre and the Trillion Trust. Again, a big thanks to Sky Sport Next, SPI Productions for the fantastic job. Thanks for joining us on Sky Sport Next. Del Woodford and Elise Fraser have been with you throughout the evening. Uh, enjoy the presentations and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the 2022 Track National Championship Under-19 Men's Sprint will now take place. The medals will be presented by Michelle Henderson from the Cycling New Zealand Board. In third place, and the winner of the bronze medal, representing Auckland, Luke Blackwood. In second place and the winner of the silver medal, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Jackson Russell. And in first place and the winner of the gold medal and your 2022 Under-19 Men's Sprint National Champion, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Liam Kavanagh. Liam also receives a national championship jersey the, and the Lua Rose Bowl. And a native plant from our proud sponsors, Amber Garden Centre. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in congratulating our under-19 men sprint podium. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for the 2022 Track National Championship Under-19 Men's Points Race will now take place. We welcome Michelle Henderson back from the Cycling New Zealand Board to present the medals. In third place and the winner of the bronze medal, representing Mid-South Canterbury, Jackson White. In second place, and the winner of the silver medal, representing Auckland, Joel Douglas. And in first place, and the winner of the gold medal, and your 2022 Under-19 Men's Points Race National Champion, representing Waikato Bay of Plenty, Lewis Johnston. Yeah, Lewis.
Lewis also receives the Shane Phillips Memorial Trophy and a native plant from our proud sponsors, Amber Garden Centre. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us and show your appreciation for the place getters in the under-19 men's points race national championship. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now very proud to be able to present the Levin Jubilee Cup. This cup is to pre be presented to the under-19 male with the most points across the time trial, sprint and scratch races combined. We welcome Michelle Henderson from the Cycling New Zealand Board to present the trophy. The 2022 winner of the Levin Jubilee Cup. It's a tie, and both of our riders are representing Waikato Bay Plenty. Please welcome Oliver Watson Palmer and Lewis Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Lewis and Oliver for taking out the Levin Jubilee Cup for 2022. We are catching up with Leanne Kavanagh, who is uh, very proudly wearing an under-19 men's sprint national championship jersey. So talk us through that race, Liam. Oh, it was pretty, pretty insane. The boys definitely didn't make it easy. Um, nearly took the national record, but Luke just took it just before me. So well done to him. Um, but the boys definitely didn't make it easy for me. Yeah, it's a really strong group um, in the under-19 sprint um, categories at the moment. So is that driving you? And like you said, Luke, Luke did take the national, uh, national um, championship title um, time. Talk us through what that means, having some really strong guys pushing you every day. Oh, like I definitely came into this wanting to beat that time and knowing that was, there was someone else out there that could beat it as well. It's really, um, really good to know that there's a good bunch of boys coming through. I know Jackson and Jared, we're all kind of coming through at the moment, so it's good looking good for this year. Um, we have talked to some others about family support. What is the family support and um, who is your favourite family member? Oh, family support's great. Dad's always supporting me and stuff, but I think I have to say, my auntie, always, always giving me the best love and support. So, you know, got to thank her. Thanks, Bobby. And first year at uni, and you're in the halls at Waikato, so obviously you're going to be taking back um, some hardware and some new clothes to the, to the guys back at the hall. What do you think they'll be thinking of this right now? Oh, they basically told me um, before the Nationals, they saw the plants given out on the first day, and they're like, right, bring a plant back for us. And I'm like, I'll do my best. And so I've got a plant for you guys. Is that going to survive the year? Um, hopefully. <laughs> we'll catch up with you at the next Nationals, and we'll find out. So congratulations. National Champs jersey looks great, and, um, and congratulations for all your successes. Thank you very much.
and we are catching up with Lewis Johnson, our under-19 men's points race national champion. There are no spectators here, Lewis, but that was a really popular win, so congratulations. How did that go? Uh, it was awesome, eh? Um, it was real tough. Um, Joel and Jackson made the race real tough and always made a respect to them, and yeah, it was great. So you took a lap, which made um, the last sprint um, not so critical for you. Was that part of the plan, just to kind of try and secure that early? Um, no, that wasn't really planned. I kind of went off. I, ch I was behind one of my teammates, Matt Davis, and um, yeah, we just kind of ended up off the front and then just took the lap and I guess secured a few points early on. Eh? And you're a local Waikato guy, um, uh, rider, so we do see you around here a little bit in the Velodrome. What's it like walking in here every day in a facility like this, but just knowing that you've, you're, you're on the same boards as, as some world champions? Yeah, it's awesome, eh? Um, we get to see a few elites around heaps and sometimes train with them if we're lucky enough, and yeah, it's awesome, eh? First national title, individual t national title for you? Yeah, it is, yeah. How stoked are you right now? Over the moon, eh? It's awesome. Um, and Fish, I think, is he coaching you at the moment? Yeah, yeah he is, yeah. Talk us through the relationship with um, Fish and kind of how he's developed you to get you to this point where you're a national champion. Um, yeah, he's like, he's like my cycling father, eh? He's, he's awesome, love him to bits. Yeah, he, the training's awesome, and yeah, I'm where I am today because of him, so yeah, got to thank him, thank him heaps. Awesome. Um, the whole Fish family is um, very much appreciated by all of us, so... Um. Thank you very much, Lewis, and congratulations. It's fantastic to see you on top of a podium. You really deserve it. Thank you. Thanks so much.